What is going on? What is going on? What's going hey. on? I'm feeling amazing. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? How am I feeling? This is about oh you. <laughs> no, it's about you, child. It, it's not about me. It ain't just about me, child. How is everybody doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the final after show, Chasing Atlanta. Woo, woo. Um, yeah. Thanks for making y'all. How y'all doing? Ooh, how, how do y'all feel? <laughs> do y'all feel like a, a breakup just happened? You said what? I said, do they feel like a breakup just happened? Child, <laughs> they probably do. They probably do, honey. Um, all, of, all of the closings were very emotional. I will say that. It was okay. it was it was really good. I felt I felt it in my heart above my breast. Yeah. 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 Um it was definitely emotional for me as well. Um honestly, like I was telling you earlier when I was editing um Dominique and Antoine um scene, I was crying, bawling, eyes, tears, like because I was just like, wow, like this is this is really it. This is really it. Um, you know, six incredible season seven years like never could honestly imagine and um i'm just glad that you know for the most part um again like i said the show was designed to chase your dreams and showcase what you got going on and all the other stuff so i'm glad that a lot of the cast members from season one to six got a lot out of it um i hope they did um because that's the most important thing besides all the chaos and everything else that we're going to also get into tonight. Um, yes, yes, yes. I see a few of y'all in the comments. Awesome Thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you. Not you crying, Rico. Um, awesome job with Atlanta. Thank you to everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, Jamar looks good. Period. Listen, I, I did this for y'all. It's the last episode. It's the last after show. I said, let me give y'all my, my little one, two. Yes, I love you too. I love you too. You said season seven coming soon. I didn't say that. <laughs> well, look, I love how the people just like, look, if you never ask, you won't get a close vibe when I get uh, fed. So Listen. maybe, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, y'all. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. What the people talking um, about? I'm just, I'm looking at the comments. Andario is the sexy one. Oh, thank you. Um, looking great. Thank you. Um, season six was making amazing. Um, hey. Are all the shows ending? No, they are not. It's just chasing Atlanta for now. Um, I hope the producers get to Excel after this. Mm -hmm. Can we get a marathon from season one through six? That'd be a long ass video, bitch. <laughs> That'd be, be damn near 48 hours. <laughs> Yeah. Is How that long something was I season five uh, marathon? That was like 12 hours, at least 12, 13 18. hours. On the it was 18. Bitch. 18 hours. I mean, every episode was like, what, over an hour? Which Girl, we're also going to do. Y'all look at like three days, three, four days worth of shit. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Quality at that. And you know, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the middle I feel like the child in the middle of a divorce. Y'all leaving us. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go be with your daddy, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Not the joint custody. <sighs> I'm going to meet me. Lamar looks like Jay's brother. Okay. Um oh, under bringing straights, bring us straights to your platforms. I had all my girls watching. Period. I hope they are educated and informed. I hope they got the hope they some. Baby, listen, baby, listen. Um, how do y'all feel? So, how do you feel, Jamar? Um, being that this is it, and this was your first time coming on as a lead producer for the final <laughs> season. Thank you, thank you. Um, I mean, it's it's wild. Like, I remember being just a fan like everybody else that's in the comment section right now. And then just building the relationships with the cast and you through you know, my content, my um, online podcast with Scotty, shout out to Scotty for the prelude, award-winning, thank you. Um, but yeah, like it's, 
You brought me on season five. You didn't know. You just like, I'm just going to trust it. I'm going to bring you on for a scene or two. Just kind of see how, you know, test the waters. I think I did a good job. Brought me back for season six. And like, this is my girl. And I appreciate her for letting me be a part of this amazing legacy. Like, y'all know, I'm, I usually be on lives, but like, there's a lot of y'all up in here. So, and a lot of y'all showing me like a lot of support, you know, throughout my tenure here at the season. And I appreciate that. But like, I, this is something that I will, you know, always cherish forever. Like, and I know this is only the beginning because we all, you know, have recognized the talent that this man next to me has. And it's only a matter of time before the powers that be uh, write that check. Please. Hallelujah. Please. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Let everybody eat. Amen. But I mean, I'm happy. I'm thankful. I'm just, you know, truly in awe of everything. And it's just, it's, it's so surreal to be uh, here in this moment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm very appreciative of you, Jamar. Um, like I have told you before, I think we have became sisters, besties. <laughs> I, I don't know how you got me labeled over there, but I do we love know a that. lot. Huh? That we know a lot. We, we are sharing we a lot. lot. Yes. <laughs> I, I did it to you. You helped me through my cries and my, my trials and my tribulations for the past few months. And, you know, you were that first person to call when I said, hey, girl, this episode going to be late. I'm sorry. Just tell them. Uh, <laughs> I was chasing HR. Just tell them. I'll be patient. I'm sorry, which is something we are also going to get to later on in the show, because I know y'all probably have a lot of questions. Um, well, I've seen a lot of y'all questions on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, or X, you know, all over the place in my DMs. Friends texting me, you know, all of that. So, so so we'll address a few things on a professional level for everybody that needs to know a few things. But um, yeah, so you ready to get started on this episode? Oh, girl, don't need to refill my glass. You might want to do that. <laughs> Hold on. One moment, please. You might want to do that, honey. You might want to do that. This baby, I oh shit, I'm making a mess. Praise the Lord. Shout out to Bella Rosa. That's honestly the only wine bottle I could think about. Shout out to Cupcake because everything else in the aisle was twenty dollars and they wouldn't finna get that from me. Oh, I'm screaming. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, truly, because no. All right, let's get into it. So we're gonna go in order for this episode. Um, first and foremost. Um, we just want to let all of the viewers know, even though I'm pretty sure most of y'all have watched the episode, um, that Chasing Reality does not condone sexual misconduct, sexual assault. Um, I do also want to say before we do start the scenes um, that I've had conversations with every cast member about this situation. I've handled it in the way I felt like was best fit for my brand and what I thought. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's all I have to explain to y'all about. I mean, I've talked to the cast members about it and that was that. Um, so that's just your disclaimer before we do get into the episodes. When we do finish, I'm, I'm sorry, the scenes. When we do finish the scenes um, afterwards, we will bring up a surprise person. Some of you may know him, but um, I can't wait for y'all to gag. And then we'll also open up the um, stream yard to anybody that wants to come up and chat with us. Um, my only rule is don't be disrespectful to the cast. We've seen y'all comments, but don't come up here and talk shit, period. That's all. That's all. Um, you will get dropped and you will get blocked. All right, let's do it. Perfect. Uh-oh. Oh, what's that? Someone who I thought was not only a friend, but a confidant. I need to start from the beginning of that relationship to bring you up to speed on now. Me and Oliver, we became friends 2018. This is, honestly, this is our very first falling out ever in life. And um, in my opinion, from my vantage point, it to me, it gives jealousy. You didn't get chose. I, we've done all this, we've done all that. But I chose Tonka. And the reason I say that is because our entire 
relationship and friendship has been nothing but about sex, about fucking, about flirting, about touching, about rubbing. All right. So y'all have already seen the scene on the episode. Um, so as a... Oh, thank you. Somebody text me. Um, so as a producer, I'm not really going to get my opinions on how the cast handled, you know, I, I just, I'm just not going to get into that. I'm just not. Um, but what I will say is that um, shortly after Kane's party, after the altercation and everything, um, to be honest, me and Jamar was like, really like, what the fuck just happened? Um, that after the was, night, oh, no, I, that scene. Y'all. <laughs> like, there was so much to digest because what y'all saw was still only like maybe the 70% of maybe what occurred. You know, you can't include everything. Love you too, Dominique. We have five cameramen. Five. All actively working at the same time. And yet still there were things we were just all going here, there, everywhere. Like the cast was losing it that night. And we just had to park. We left the scene and just had to park and just process. It was so much. Mm -hmm. We'll never forget. Mm -hmm. But just from a production standpoint, it was that was probably the most like stressful filming we've had all season. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, I will. I will definitely say that this season was probably the most explosive out of all the seasons I've done of Chasing Atlanta. Um, I do feel like at some part of the season, maybe this is just my personal opinion. I feel like I may have lost a little control of it um, because it just got out of control. Um, when it comes down to Kane's um, party. And the whole fight situation, like Jamar said, we had to stop the car twice um, because we were really trying to just process what happened. How do we handle this situation? Is this something we can air? Is this something that we want to show? What will the cast feel about this if it wasn't shown or if it was? What would the audience say if it wasn't? Well, I mean, y'all clearly wouldn't know anything if we didn't like promote it or anything like that. And then you also have, you know, I guess the... Um, you know, the lives and everything like that that came after that. So it just made everything so difficult to process. And I think it also just put me in a place where I just honestly don't know what to do. Um, confusion at that. Like I was just literally all over the place. Um, and that was filming it. So when it came down to actually editing it, that was another thing where it was just like, shit. So, yeah. You have to, as the solo editor of this program, have uh, a consistent conflict of, you know, we want to, you know, be respectful to the cast because they, you know, they, they are the ones that are being put out there. And these are their stories to tell. But we also, we, we want to make sure we're respectful and we're, we're honest about what's happening. We're, we allow teachable moments to happen. You know, and I think that's another aspect of this uh, of this platform that's still really important. Like, so you have a, a challenge to be somewhat in the middle where you're honest about it, but still respectful about the cast stories. And I think, through, you know, across the seasons, you've done well with that. I want to say that the cast would, you know, agree with that. So kudos. Thank you. This is this is and a tough find ballad. So yeah. Yes, um, I do see someone that said, "Did you consult with any SA professionals?" Um, honestly, I did not. Um, I did speak with Tuan Dixon because um, he also had the conversation with Oliver. Um, I just talked briefly briefly with him about the situation, trying to see, figure out what to do. Um, I did talk to people outside of Chasing Reality to see, like, you know, how can I go about this? Um, I should have handled it a little bit differently by talking to an essay professional. Um, that probably would have helped the situation or helped me understand how to really process it. Because, again, when you have all of these things going on from the drama, the chaos that's happening on the inside and the outside of that scene, of that party, I was all over the place with confusion. Um, and I also just want to be clear, um, 
let's talk about how that fight happened or how do we get there. Um, so after the whole, I guess, chaos between J. Twan, Dominique, Troy, and was that just it? I think that was just it. <laughs> um, after that chaos happened, me and Jamar just sat on the driveway. We sat at the end of the driveway and we was just like, All what, the is going on here? what is going on here? And so I was just like, what is going on? So then all of a sudden you hear this slap, loud, slap. And so then I'm like, oh, what happened? We turn around and we see that there's an altercation happening. So of course, roll the cameras. But um, yeah, it was, I, it was, it was a lot. I remember once we came back up again, to bring the camera. I didn't even have time because I think you know usually when we kind of you know take a pause, I you know take the phone out of the holster, hand it you know show you what we got you know kind of you know take a review, and when we had to pull back up, I didn't even have time to put the phone back in the holster. I just turned the the uh, the light on and I turned the camera. I was holding the light with one hand and the camera in the other hand for me with both hands. Didn't even have a chance to probably set the shit up because it's like look, we got to get it, get it now, we'll never get it again. So it's like yeah. I mean, we did a it, lot. Was scary. it was it was honestly surprising. It was honestly surprising. Um I don't condone violence, but it happens. It happens. And I hate it. I hate that it happens, but that's ridiculous. Um yeah, it's honestly hard to process it, really. I mean, we are an independent web series, it's literally just me, Jamar. I mean. It was honestly quite hard to process that. It really was. It really, really was. Um, let's see what the comments are saying. So we have, you have a comment on what King said that Oliver said about you. Um, do I have a comment? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually originally found out about that. So I don't remember him saying that at the, um, at the scene. But when I had got your footage, Jamar, when I had, when I think we were right. watching it back and I heard it and I was like, oh, is that how she feels about me? Oh my God. Um, I mean, I was, I was a little, you know, a little thank. I was a little mad, but I mean, I ain't bad. <laughs> and shout out to uh, Willa, as many times we laughed at her too, but now she said that about the heart, I'm hollering. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm hollering. hollering. But not I'm hollering, but yeah. <laughs> Baby, that's that's what made it better. To be honest, that's what made. It oh, better. we keyed at that from that day forward to today. Mm-hmm. Um, do I believe it? You believe it? I mean, what? Oh, girl, I'm looking at these text messages and I'm just like, what are you talking about? Okay, thank you, Jay. But um, do you um? Somebody said, do you, you believe it? I mean, look. I've heard a lot of things. I'm not saying Oliver at all said anything. Like, I can't confirm or that whole situation. A lot of people have said a lot of things about me. And to be honest, I mean, it is what it is. If you don't say it in my face, if you don't call me on the phone or you don't put a name on it, I really honestly don't know how to take it. So it is what it is. Um. Okay, so let's see what other comments. Let's get off of me. Let's see. Um. um let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, why was it managed? So the scene was mandatory because, as you saw throughout the entire season, we haven't had a full group scene since the barbecue. And so we originally planned to have a cast trip, which we'll talk about later in the show. We originally planned to have a cast trip, um, and we wanted to get everybody together before we actually have the cast trip. We thought Kane's adult school party was fine. Um, everybody was, you know, going to go. They was available. But clearly when we got there, the shit started hitting the fan. Um, I do want to bring somebody up real quick because it looks like they text me saying they want to say hey and bye. So I'm going to bring up Mark Hell. Hi. I just want to say hi. Hello. Bye. Listen, all I want to do because, you know, I'm out in these Dallas streets. Um, I just want to say t this was a, an amazing season. Sorry, I had to back up. This was an amazing season, despite all the drama and stuff. You guys did a wonderful job. So to give you guys some to yourself, no matter what. The comment, well, not the comment. 
people have been saying you guys are doing a wonderful job and I can't wait to see what you guys have to come up next. And I can't wait to see Chase in Orlando. <laughs> Chasing Orlando. Yeah. We talk about it. I thought we're going to talk about they were it. Gay. They were gay. gay. They didn't know right, about they y'all, right. all thought, y'all all thought for the most part it was going to be DC or New York, but I gagged you. We finna go down south, honey. I'm moving down south. We're, we're going down south. Um, yes, guys. But yeah, Jamar, Jamar, and Dario, you guys. You guys did an amazing job. I can't see the comments, but I just want to come on and just say hello and just say from the Chasing um, Production family in Dallas, we will always have you guys back. Thank you guys for supporting. And um, Chase, hey, where, where is Chasing Dallas? <laughs> where Girl, is Chase- and Dario, can- listen, and Dario and his attitude canceled Chasing Dallas. So call send him all the. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! I cancel chasing Dallas. Oh wow! Listen, this is news to me. I I Here's Dallas. the thing. I'll be listen. I'll be honest. Chasing Dallas. Um, you know, soon. Have a great night. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, so messy. Shout out to Markel. Markel. So for anybody, if you don't know, I'm pretty sure you do. But Markel took over chasing Dallas for um, season four. Um. It was a cute switch up, and it definitely did what it had to do, period. All right. So um, let's see what other comments before we move on to the next scene. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I don't really see anything else. Do you have any more comments on the first scene, Jamar? I, I know that was a very difficult scene for the two of them to shoot uh, because it, it, being in either one of their shoes is a very uh, just difficult dynamic to navigate. Mm. And I know you guys had a you know personal conversation with them afterwards. And mm. I just hope that they, I just wish them the best. That's all I can say, I just wish them the best. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Tonka, shout out to Kane. Um, we wish hey, y'all the best. Hey Kane. Um, I haven't, well, all right, so um, somebody said, I don't think Oliver said that. Yes, so I did call Oliver on the phone um, a few weeks ago, and I said, hey, girl, did you call me a weak fat bitch for real and told Kane that? She said, no. Look, I, I, I'm not worried about it at all. I mean, I know what I look like, you know. <laughs> all right, anyways, let's go ahead and move on. So we are now about to talk about Seven and her drag ma. Saraja Sinclair Dupree. Dupree! Saraja is my emotional support, my friend. So we're here, we're gonna have some lunch, and we're gonna talk about some things because I now have kids. I'm trying to figure out how to be a mother to my own clan. And I want to take what she taught me and instill it to the generation that's coming up now. Okay, so mom. Yes. I need to talk to you about some stuff, okay? Okay. You know Pride is coming up. I'm thinking about doing a Renaissance tribute. It's like ballroom and vulgars. I want to start in the audience. But I feel like that's kind of resting on my laurels. I don't say that it's resting on your laurels. It's more so operating in your strength. I will tell you what the girls have always told me, the older girls have always told me, before you put anything on stage, read it, read it, and read it again. And then pick it apart and then read it again. Because by the time you get on stage, you know that you're 100% confident in what you're putting on stage, you know? Mm -hmm. Because you can carry a stage by yourself, that's not a question. My mother is the reason why I know my words and I know my music inside and out. I not only know the words, I know the beats. I'm always in my head about how I look, how my performance is being placed out into the world. Okay, so like low- Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, shout out to Seven, also known as Drew Friday when she's on the stage. Um, you wanna go first or me? <laughs> so, in relation to this scene, as somebody who is, um, of course, a fan and is just a part of like the drag community, what she said, uh, I think was great advice for just any performer in general. Like, before you go onto the stage, know your act, left, right, up, down, and diagonal tear it apart, like knowing, seeing a performer who's prepared and seeing a performer who knows what it is they're doing, they know the song that they're conveying and how to perform it, 
as an audience member, it just makes it so much more special for us to watch you because to see someone up there ill prepared, doesn't really know the music, it's it's not good for us and you're not gonna get my dollar. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's just a great approach to take to any artist of any particular performance style. It's like know your craft, left, right, up and down, and be prepared with what you want to put on the stage. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Seven. Um, she did, I think she said in her closing, if I can remember, because you know I just edited this episode. Um, she said in her closing. <laughs> I just, had to, <laughs> I just had to throw it out there. Um, shout out to Zach because um, her drag has definitely elevated from when we saw her last year um, or last season. Um, this season, child, Mama's eight. Mama's eight. Oh yeah, what you did that that very first scene when she did that jump split at that show? It's a shame. Yes. That a lot of music. A lot of that music that we could not use for Drew's show. Like, yeah, y'all could not really get into the show like we mm -hmm. were able to get into the show. Yes, yes. Make sure y'all go back and check out the bonus clip though, because I did put out the bonus for um, I think it was the whole Renaissance number. So definitely Britney. check that out. I think that was the yes. no, I didn't put that one out, but I should. Hmm. Then what one did we show? Was that number was that Beyonce? I showed the Beyonce one. Okay, so it was Beyonce. I know she did. So when did she do Britney? I can't remember what it was. So the the Beyonce were you there? I don't know were you there. Yeah, I you should have been. been. I should have been the Peaches, right? Yeah, yeah, I was there. I was there with uh, with her and Cassidy. My my brain off to that tonight. It was a lot. Of it was a lot of months. A lot of scenes. <laughs> Ugo. Yeah. Ugo. Um, um, yes. Um, drag definitely improved. I did like the fact that she said showgirl because when I asked her in green screens, um. What is what is the difference between like how you do your drag and everything versus the drag we used to see like on RuPaul's Drag Race where you have like the extra wow makeup and everything like that, right? Yeah. Um, so she was look, she gave her answer in the thing. She wants to be a showgirl, period. You know, hey, you look good doing it. And do so, so shout I, out I to Sam. I think the conversation with her um with her drag mom was very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I really like the dynamic between the two. I like that she said that she hasn't been able to see her as often. Um, it was a lot of things that we did, of course, cut out because of the names and stuff like that. That seven has to worry, watch out, because girl, I can't put everybody's names in. Um, and yeah, yeah. So I definitely. mean, you'll be convincing the hell out these scenes because I remember each of these scenes being about at least an hour. And you turned it into seven minutes. And, and, let's talk, and let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so I want people to understand. Um, I want people to understand that, um, and this is just really for the audience. Um, yeah. When we film these scenes, most of these scenes on average are filmed for about 30 minutes to an hour. And so when you watch this back, you're probably watching maybe like three to 15 minutes of it, depending on the type of scene it is. Um, I want y'all to understand that we can't put everything in because I do try to keep this under an hour, even though I happen to go over every time. Um, I do want to keep the TV format standard where you have your episodes really 43 minutes, which is something I am working on. Um, because when we do happen to, you know, see the future of this getting picked up or if they want a copy of this season, at least it will be ready to be ready for TV and not for YouTube. Um, so I definitely want people to understand that. Um, yeah, and that's that. Let's look at this. Um, seven eats no shade, period. How is editing for y'all, baby? I watch it, I, I watch it, you know, from time to time. And let me see some of the process. And girl, I, I'll be understanding why stuff be late because just to do what was it like 15 to 30 seconds, you know, just to do like a lot of the trailers. Like that Orlando trailer that we showed last night, we were on the phone for like what? Three hours. <laughs> Two, three, three hours, three and a half hours, yeah. just to do 30 seconds. Yeah. So I, I, know, the, I know the it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. So when we say like, so when we, well, when I post out the announcements that the episodes are going to be late, or if I say like it's gonna be a day late, honestly, when I say it's a day late, it's because honestly, this is really taking me a long time to finish. Such as Kane's adult, adult party, 
Um, that oh, scene itself, man. and that there scene was a probably scene I filmed you didn't even use. <laughs> What's that? There was a scene that I that I filmed that you didn't even get to use. What was that? Uh, in the kitchen while while they was acting crazy on the um on the porch, I had Oliver and Berlin in the kitchen. Yes. So remember when you had the um. I don't see it right here, but when you had the um the little piece in my phone, yes, it's muted, so I couldn't hear anything. Um, and see, I didn't I didn't know how that thing worked because I'm like, if it's plugged up to somebody, but then I moved I, to a, a different I, location. It was on, so it was on Dominique. It was on Dominique, and so That's Dominique was outside. So whatever Dominique was saying, it wasn't correlating with your video, which was you yeah. recording. Yeah. yeah, I had a lot of footage that probably couldn't get used because the, the mic was in a completely different location of the house. And I didn't know if it worked. I said, why well, I'm bugging or it was um, audio. But you had it. Look, it's always good to have it and to use it however which way you can than to just not have it at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Um you got to be quiet while he's editing. It's no joke. Yep, she knows it. So that's my mom. She was over here earlier. Um, hey, mama. Hey, she was over here earlier, and I and every time she got on that phone, I just rolled my eyes. I was like, Mom, I'm trying to finish this episode before it becomes late again. I need you to get off the phone. So when I edit, I edit at full volume, like really, really loud. So I'm talking about these speakers be out here screaming, rah, rah, and all this other stuff. But the, anyway, we'll talk about that later. We need to finish reviewing the show because we got to bring up our special guest in the field. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. So let's go ahead and move on to um, We Were Born, Kane and Wayne at the Batting Place. Uh, last year. So I was like, when he was getting his old And now I feel I like, like, hearing that he's being pissed on, I feel demoralized. Sexual assault is a very, 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 very serious allegation to throw around. In this group, we all are touchy-feely. We all flirt with each other. We all slap each other on the ass. And I want to say that I did not see at all any sexual harassment that I feel. Now, I can't speak for his experience, his experience may feel like he may have felt that way, but I didn't see anybody getting touched inappropriately at all. It's just odd that Oliver has a history of doing things off camera and getting on camera and portraying it a different way. If you another relationship type of this is news, Wayne the Pain. Now this was a, a damn sure shock to me because I was like, Taco was just in my DMs. He was just in. You know, we were just messaging. Like, how all of a sudden that y'all in a, a solid relationship, you taking him home to meet your mama and shit. So I'm like, okay, this was just a week ago. But I don't know, maybe relationships move fast in the A. I I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't lie. I mean, that's why I was kind of... Baby. <sighs> First of all, It was hot as a motherfucker in that damn bed. It was hot as hell. It was yeah. Hot. Morning. Scorching. In that batting cage. I don't know how y'all did it. I don't. I don't know how y'all did it. I didn't mean to click that comment. I don't know. How, <laughs> I don't know how y'all did it. I don't. I don't know how y'all. Um. Um. So the first part of that, um, no means no, period. Um, like I said, we already had the conversation with the individuals and the entire cast. I'm not about to speak on that situation. Um, but however, when it comes down to this other situation between Wayne and um, um, Tonka, I'm gonna be honest, when we were filming it, I was actually blown like, away. It's like, what? What the fuck, what you mean? We, didn't, we had no idea. I was like, wait, where is the text? But we want to see too shit. <laughs> Our reaction was Kane's reaction. And like a lot of the stuff the cast just brings to the camera and we don't be knowing and we be behind the camera gagging. 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 So y'all have to understand when we film these scenes, we strive for everything to be unscripted. Like everything unscripted like of course 
Um, how we do things here at Chasing Reality, um, the cast will send us um, scene requests. They'll tell us exactly what they want to do um, at this location, at this time, at this day. They want to invite this person, and then we'll go from there. Um, so, of course, after the adult toy party, a lot of the cast, um, excuse, excuse me, a lot of the cast wanted to do recaps of the situation and, of course, you know, chime in on how they feel about it on camera and things of that nature. Um so when it came down to that, it really gagged us. Um, one thing I will say about Wayne DePain, he is a very, um, he's a very, he's a cast member that comes with a lot of surprises. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Surprises. This is, this is, this is something I'm sure that the audience would love to know and for us to laugh at. How, what was your initial reaction to his uh, idea to transform in the confessionals back in episode two? <laughs> I was like, you know what? I appreciate the theatrics. Oh, I, love, I, I love, love it. it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I mean, listen, do what you got to do to promote yourself, period. And that right there, everything, everything. Um, Cause you know, they did it. Um, you know, Kendra and Wayne did that season four. So when I was staying in my um, past apartment, um, um, they went to the bathroom. It was like, we're gonna come back out with a surprise or something like that. When they came back out with that suit, I was like, hey, what y'all gonna do with this stuff? <laughs> and look, and we remember it to this day. To this day. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happens to a toad when it gets struck by lightning? Right. The same thing that happens to everything else. Now, what's oh. gooey? Now, what's <laughs> And then next thing you know, play, 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 and then hear me. <laughs> yes. Oh God. Now, shout out to Wayne Payne. Um. Now, one thing I will say about Wayne is that I really, 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 really wish that we got a lot out of Wayne. So one thing I will say, a little inside of tea for everybody, is that when Kendra did unfortunately leave the show in the beginning. Wayne was still there. And so we was just like, Wayne, give us something. Every time I talk to Wayne, you got something going on. You got something to show us. Now it's just you. So, you know, can we get you in the studio? Can we hear some of your music? All this other stuff. Unfortunately, we didn't get much. I mean, everybody is still like living their real lives. So they can't really give everything they want to give, you know, right away or whenever. So, yeah, but shout out to Wayne of Pain. Um, but about that situation between him and Tonka, baby, keep it. I don't know. look. That was a lot. We know nothing about that. Mm -mm. <laughs> don't know anything mm -mm. about that. That was a bit of a gag. Mm -mm. Wayne held it down. No shade. Um, Wayne can stand on his own. I like that for him. I agree. The transformation edit was good. <laughs> Wait, so that wasn't y'all idea? No. No. They they come into these confessionals and these scenes and tell us what they want to film. And we shoot it. Yes, man. All the crazy thing, all the all the crazy things that y'all saw Cassidy and I do in the confessionals are just him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they they're just funny. And so we just we just work with it. That's it. That's it, and that's all. That is all, honey. All right, I'm 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 still looking at these comments. Okay, all right, we're going to move on because we are 40 minutes in already. God dang. Okay, so I understand what the cats be saying because I'll be, I'll be watching, well, you know, directing the live. I'm just be like, I'm here so long. But I get it now. I feel like I was only- Well, I mean, this, is, this deserves to give it some time. We, we okay. can't write this one. This one we can't oh. write. Huh? I said, this one we can't rush. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to Runway 101. Um, honestly, I think I want to just get to the behind the scenes of the video because, yeah, I'll probably give my opinion on the actual scene itself, um, the conversation piece. I also wanted to let Oliver know, like, Pressure got these girls pressed. I am the mother of the world, wait, bitch. Now watch me, watch me, boot my hip. I am the mother of the world, wait, bitch. Now watch me, watch me, boot my hip. I am the 
Fuck the mother of the front face clips I'm the big boy that runs this shit I am the O, I am the I, I am the legend that wrote this bitch I am the O, I am the I, I am the legend that wrote this bitch Tonka, 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 Tonka You know us big girls, we can't be doing all that So you wasn't there. I was not. I was. You not were there. not there for the most awkward, scary. <laughs> I don't know how we gonna handle it scene. Cause I promise you, if they wasn't nervous, I was. Cause I was just like, so a little insider tea. So when we did arrive to, um, when me and um, De'Aaron, when we arrived to. Um, the um, runway 101 photo um music video shoot um in the beginning i really didn't know how to go about it because i didn't know like if there was conversations I already had you know how everybody's having conversations off camera i really didn't know like you know how people were feeling about each other i really didn't so i think um i'm not going to say a name because i really don't know for sure but one of them came to me and was like, um, we need to go ahead and have this conversation. So I asked everybody and we went and had the conversation. Um, as far as the conversation, like I said, I said what I said to the cast members um, about the situation. Um, that's on them. That's on them. Um, that's on them. Um, but as far as the music video though, um, shout out to Jess JJ Jones. And Tonka Garcon, and I think uh, Saint Laurent. I forgot. The I do like that song. I, I do kind of get my little, you know, my little. Oh, words. baby, every time. Every, every time. time. I get my little, you know. Get, every get, time. Get, yeah. Every time. Every time. When I do that, <laughs> I, I, look, as soon as I complete it, I watch it back. I'm over here like. Every time. Every, every, time. every single time. Um, shout out to Tonka um for doing that like you know getting into your music like t t and shout out to just jj jones um shout out to you um what else was going on that day shout out to tony bryce shout out to tony yeah. bryce shout out to mother lush and plush omg we're gonna get into that later but shout out to miss tony bryce Yes, ma'am. She came in with the lifestyle, as you saw. Okay, look, the new variant. Uh, uh. We don't play with. Oh, baby, let's let's talk about it. That new variant. She, I don't know how she got in my house and got me sick. But baby, <laughs> I need that lifestyle, Miss Ma'am. Thank you. Um. Um. Yes. Yes. Um. JJ Jones is a beautiful chocolate man. He is. Um. Is there a certain following you have? You need to you need to have to get casted. Um, no. Mm -mm. Um, I don't think any of the people that were like on this season, that before their first season, I don't think they had any crazy amount of following under 10K. Like, it just depends on what you do. And of course, correct me if I'm wrong, what you do, how well you sell yourself, and if you fit the current dynamic of the season we're trying to create. That's all. <laughs> you have a if you have a um not that me said I'm moving to Orlando. I'm bitch. You move to Houston or Orlando, bitch. You ain't going nowhere. You stay right here on the south side. Like, you ain't going nowhere. You just told Twan months ago that you was going to stay in Atlanta. Yes, your clientele is in Atlanta. So you need to go ahead and get your penthouse, go ahead and buy you a penthouse in Midtown and go stay over there. <laughs> um you ain't moving nowhere. If I can't go to Dallas, you staying in Atlanta. Um, Both of y'all are scheming to leave me. That's crazy. Girl, I've been here for 28 years, girl. You you, you can have and it. You can have it, baby. You can have 20 more. Look, Jamar finna be the, the next executive producer of Chase in Atlanta. <laughs> Not you gonna any step rate, down. <laughs> any, any rate, so um, damn, I lost my train of thought. So, um, Yes. So, um, um, hold on one second, one second. Cause I had something, I think I saw it. I'm, I'm not sure where it went. 
maybe it got deleted. Um, but I do see this. Chasing Orlando Casting has started applying now. When I get off the live, I will submit everything. Remember, it's just one person. So as soon as I get off the live, we'll make sure it is re-promoted and we will also um, submit, I mean, post the link for the application, all of that stuff in the um, as soon as we get off the live and tomorrow. Um, so yes, um, come on to Dallas, Ontario. I'm gonna just travel back and forth. I think I'm fine in Atlanta. <laughs> um, um, I, I saw something cause I really wanted to talk about it. It was something about, I think it was something about, yes. Oh, this, yes. Back to this. This is what it was. So back to this real quick. Um, so we do it. We typically do a casting call this season. I did not because this was the last season and I wanted to just, you know, get people that I knew um, or, you know, that I feel like would be great for the season. Um, but typically during the casting call, it's not about your followers. I don't ask about your followers. I don't ask about um, who you got a problem with. I don't ask about. Well, I don't ask about that at the casting call. Excuse me. Let me tell the truth. Um, I, don't, I don't I don't really go into like the whole, you know, all of that stuff. Like if you have a business and if it's flourishing or you're chasing it or if it's something that you're trying to like work on um, and you just want to expand that, like we have the subscribers and we, of course, have the viewership. This is a reality show. And one thing I noticed per se is that the drama sells. However, make sure when the drama is selling you're plugging in your business because you always want people to support your music. Um, if you're a fashion designer, you want people to buy your fashions. You want people to basically get, you want to get the benefit out of being on the show, period. Yeah. Okay. So now we're finna go to, uh, I thought Miami would have been before Orlando, unfortunately not. All right. So now we're finna get into... Uh, Moving slowly, so we already in too deep. Can't get no sleep on each other. Heavy. So, my sugar daddy has been distancing himself a bit from me because he's been dealing with his own situation and I cannot blame him for it. But the coin is low, and I definitely want to make sure. I'm doing my due diligence and making sure that I'm still investing in my dream. So, unfortunately, I haven't been talking to him, but I think I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and ask him to send me a bonus because I kind of need it. Hey, babe, what's up? Hey, love, how you doing? Nothing, just got in. Haven't heard from you a while. I'm good. I just been working at the restaurant. I had like three bookings when we were born. I also just finished my album. Well, finishing the album and planning a music video. So I wish I could do more, but I also know how yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, but you know how I love you. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I know our situation is unique or whatever. So I didn't want to ask, but I need a bonus this month or advance so I can handle a few things. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a minute. How much you need? Um, I need a million. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. We all need a we all need a million. <laughs> Me too. Darling. When you get that million, Marlene, send me a piece of it if you don't mind. If, you, if you're not, if you're if you're still mad at me or whatever, I mean, if you're not, send me a piece. Just send me a piece of it, please. Um, please, thank you. You want to start or you want me to start? Um, this is me um, reaching out to you because I want a bonus as well. Um, <laughs> what T.S. What Madison did in the car? Yeah. Um, yeah, so a, lot of people, a lot of people in the comments are asking, like, was that Jatuan? No. Jatuan was literally in the other room. <laughs> so, that, that was, that was, was the other room, yes. Um, I mean, we have no reason to believe, we have no reason to believe that that's not a real person. Anytime we show up to say to talk about it, they, this is what they showed, so 
we have no reason to believe that that's, you know, false. Um, I mean, shit, honestly, if I could call somebody for a few thousand dollars like that, I mean, shit, I would too, no shit. Listen. But, I mean, um, I don't believe that it's fake, but. Um. <clears throat> shout out to Berlin for being open to showcase or talk about her um, sugar daddy situation on the show. Um, I know she was not um, pleased with how the first scene about it was edited. Um, so I already had a conversation with her about that. So we're not going to get into that. I mean, we're just not, but I will say, I know it was probably, you know, a little uncomfortable talking about it. Um, you probably was nervous, you know, talking about the situation um i know it's a lot um so especially you know trying to do it for a show and everything like that so yeah but i hope that you get your million sis period i hope you get your bonus sis. i'll say i'll say this to, Berlin, to berlin's credit in regards to the sugar day situation we when we would talk to her about you know presenting the you know future scenes regarding the sugar daddy she was you know, adamant about trying to incorporate him visually. Mm -hmm. But it was him who was not, from what I understand, or correct me if I'm wrong, that wasn't comfortable, you know, coming on camera. So that's why we just got, you know, the phone call, which can be understandable because that's a very, you know, private matter. You may not want your business out there, but she was always, you know, very willing to participate and engage and have him on camera if he would allow. Um, but, you know, it's his choice. We're not going to, you know, force people to be a part of the show, be in front of the audience if they do not wish to do so. So we, you know, kind of gave Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. Um, that was a storyline that she wanted to take on. She wanted to talk about, you know, her sugar daddy. I know it was, she shared with me on, in green screens that, you know, it, it can be a little nerve wracking, you know, getting the opinions of, you know, what everybody is saying about the situation. Um, but listen, ignore them. Shit, you know, you know what's real, ignore it. Period. I mean, that's what I've been trying to tell everybody. You know, the comments don't, they only know what what they can see. And I mean, this is what is filmed. Um, but at the same time, don't let the comments, you know, get to you about your situation. They don't know what's really going on. We don't know everything, too. So, you know. All right. Moving on. Um, so the next thing we have here is, um, oh, let's talk about it. Has been in my shoes before, because maybe if you ain't can't tell me what to do, you can't tell me what to do. If you can tell me what to do, you can tell me what to do. So I had to call an old girl who is sickening, known for being a puss in boots. Y'all may know the girl. She's very fabulous, very stunning, and maybe she's a lesbian. <laughs> Did you miss me? I oh, they called a bad name. <laughs> Montel motherfucking Johnson. Fashion killer. Now, yes, she was in the group before I was, but when I joined the group, she was an old school girl who hit me up and has been supportive since the very first day. Took me on set, was like, hey, I want you to meet people who I work with. I was there on Saints and Sinners. I was like, oh, this is the cast party. I'm mixing and mingling. This bitch is very supportive. And I know that if I call this one, she gonna show me what to do. She gonna show me what to do. <laughs> um, I wanna say this real quick. Hey, Lauren, oh! Lauren, okay, so we would, okay, so I was at the park with one of my best friends and for her birthday. And girl, she done thought, she was like, oh my God, are you and Daria? I think that's what she said. I'm not, I can't remember exactly, but oh. I gagged. I really gagged. Hey, Lauren. Um, How cute. Montel M. F. Johnson. Let's talk about Montel. Shout out to Montel for doing the scene. Gag me because again, scene requests. The cast do submit scenes. Um, when it came down to this scene though, I was gagged. I was gagged. Um, because I'm gonna be honest. Um, after um the season three reunion debacle chaos, um, we did let go of a few people and um you know, 
Um, I stopped talking to a few of them. Montel was one of those I did stop talking to. Um, years later, we reconnected. And then here we are. We have Montel Johnson, fashion killer, killing it in the industry. Let's talk <laughs> about it. Let's talk about it. Killing it in the industry. Um, talking to J.M. Moore. Give me J.M. Moore some pointers because J.M. Moore wants to retire. Girl, please. Anyway, if I if I can't quit, <laughs> you can retire. Uh, I mean, yeah, like you said, shout out to Montel. I mean, we had, you know, me and Montel had met brief, briefly at a um, completely separate event, but this is the first time that I got to really interact with him. And it was kind of crazy because season two was the first season I just started binge watching, like right before season four started. And... Uh, so I was getting, you know, like a crash course and people like Montel, Oliver, Kendra, you know, Gardini, and anybody else from like the old season two and three, Lauren. And so to like be working, you know, on the production side and being able to film a scene with him in it was just like really, really full circle. I love Montel. Uh, he's always giving me great, great energy. So it was great to um, have, this, have this experience with him. Yes, absolutely. Shout out to Montel. Shout out to Montel. Um, you need, if y'all are not following Montel, please make sure you are following Montel. The content is sickening. He also does music. Make sure you follow everything of Montel Johnson. Um, but it was just such a great vibe seeing him. Like I literally gagged and I just wanted to talk to him for the whole day. I think we did almost, but I think we had Pretty to go. Much. Uh, yeah, we could. Yeah. I mean, if we would, if we would talk like BTS, that scene almost didn't happen. Because of the establishment trying to be shady. Yes, I forgot. And let's, try to, let's talk about it. <laughs> Girl, they can't. So we after we filmed the scene. Now, again, independent web series, honey. Independent. If you know, you know. Child. So when we went to the um, because I think it was called the High Note, the High Note yeah. in Midtown. Um, very nice place. I just want to say the menu is crap. Um, but after, we, but after we film, after we film the scene, here comes the manager talking about some. Hey, I mean, what are y'all doing? M mind you, nobody was really there except at the bar. Um, you know, so we didn't really think it was an issue. But hey, Child. he came out twice, I think. Trying to be like, what are y'all doing? And then I think once he kind of saw like the, the we were actually shooting a legit scene, he saw the actual cameras. I think he came back around and was like, oh, you know, yes, th yes, yes. thank y'all for coming and enjoying our establishment. It was just like just a minute ago, I don't know what you thought we were doing, but she was giving a shade, and it's like, girl, bye. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Cute place though. It was a really cute place, but that mean you they could have paid it with that mean you, honestly. They could have paid it. Is Hershey in here? I do see her. Did y'all offer a space for any of the earlier cast members when doing the season? Um, we saw Montel. Yes. Um, yes and no. Um, originally, um, did I say this was the final season? I think yes I and no. It was a great answer. Yeah. Yes and yes no. Or... We did reach out to a few. Um, but we also, you know, I also, I, you know what it was, I think what it was, was that, um, um, the way this cast was set up, I really couldn't see bringing in earlier cast members to this cast. You see what I'm saying? Um, because we already got 14 cast members. We already got 14 personalities we got to deal with. Um, it would have been nice if I did, you know, reach out to a few to see if we can get some special appearances, but y'all have to understand Everybody has lives. Some people that we really wanted to bring back have moved on with their life. Um, honestly. Yeah, and I, I think the, the audience. Show, I mean, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I, I think the audience just expects when they say bring back this person, bring back that person for, you know, this sort of dynamic. I think you're thinking about who they were then and not, you know, attributing to who they probably are now. Like, they, they, they're probably not going to be that same person on screen because even. From this season, I would feel like the cast of season six would say who they see on screen from this current season is not who they are now. So expect, exactly. expecting people to be the same people who they were three, four years ago, I think is unrealistic. Wishful thinking. 
but mm -hmm. unrealistic in that sense. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody said Tracy Capel, Chappelle, when you started this season, did you know it was the last season or did that happen while filming? Um, no, originally before I did sign on for this season, it was going to be my final season of Chasing Atlanta as executive producer. Um, after season five, honestly, because season five was just about to be my last season. Um, but I said, you know what, let's go ahead and give the fans one more go at this and bring on some icons and legends like Tony Bryce and Tonka Garcon. So yes, I did say that this was the final season um, before I started casting contracts and all of that. So yes. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Bondario and his big ass heart is. <laughs> Got it, honey. I love chasing okay. Atlanta. Uh, Dario Jay was filming the Pink Polaris concert at the beginning of season five. That was the, the first time I saw him and uh, the other producers in person. And I was like, should I say hi? I don't think I should say hi. Like, he looks busy. Wait, what? Say that again? Remember I was looking at the the, say again? Remember when you did the Pink Polaris concert? The yes. Very, very beginning of season five, like July of like 2021, you first started filming. Yes. That, the scene with Rico, the Dominique's the Troy's, which I talked about. Yes. That was the first time that I remember seeing you in person and you were there with the other producers. And I was like, I know, I was like, I know who he is, but I didn't want to say anything because I knew like you were working. And I was like, I can't, I don't want to do this here and now. But I said, I'll I'll do it later, eventually later. And uh shout out to Rico with a K because you know I helped him, you know, get to that that scene that he filmed episode two of season five with him and um the creative producer, and I was not supposed to be in that scene at all, Nothing. scene whatsoever. But he just said, "Just sit in this chair." And yes. I remember Dario said, "Like he's on me, and we're gonna do the same." So I said, "Okay, sure, <laughs> no biggie deal. Just on one of my favorite shows, just randomly with no preparation. I had a damn do rag on my head. I was like, what the fuck? But you know what?'" It is what it is. Oh, you oh you're talking about the scene. Yes, you're talking about the scene yes. with um, Cardi Monroe. Yes. Yes. I was not supposed to be there. I was just there riding with Rico, just trying to get and I'm just trying to, you know, just watch from the sidelines, but just said sit in the damn chair and say, girl. I mean, sure. baby, you hand okay. off, you know, just just sit right there, you know. Period. And we exchanged info that day. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, let's get into the comments before we move on. Um, let's see. Rico Payne with the love. Love you, Rico. Um, Andre would love to give you guys a proper goodbye. We are going to open up the link after we finish everything we're going to do tonight. Um, so that's why we're hurrying it up because I just realized we hit an hour. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. yeah. So, um, love you, Andrea and Jamar. I'll see y'all next month. Okay, I'll be here. Um, let's see. Let's see. I did see another comment Hershey made. If another producer steps in, will you reboot Atlanta? When you mm. say another producer, what kind of producer are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? Like, you, Hershey, oh, you I, want your producers. Hershey, we need your producers. Put us in the word with your producers, MTV, World of Wonder. <laughs> RuPaul dra RuPaul's Drag Race. Cause what? Cause what are we watching Fridays at eight o'clock? RuPaul's Drag Race. Whiplash. Whiplash. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to her. Why are you ending the show? Um, we will talk about it later. Um, let's see. So stay, so stay tuned for that. Um, um, let's see. 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 All right, period. All right, so let's go ahead and get into um, this scene right here. And without there any being hoorah, mm -hmm. I was like, I have no other choice but to defend myself in this way because I've already done A through Y. Mm -hmm. I've played myself second or last to keep the peace for everything else. And on the inside, I'm suffering and I'm walking away you know, feeling less than, or feeling like I've cheapened myself or lessened myself, or I've allowed somebody else to take advantage of me. And in that moment, I felt like I had to defend myself. The incident brought me back to my trauma because in the past, I've never 
fought back. I never told my mom when things were happening with some of the adults who were around, some of the other older kids who were around, family members, I never said nothing to her because I was afraid. My mama was already mad at me that I was gay. People was already in my family like, were telling me that I was gay. I didn't feel like I would have any support if I said like, this is going on. And then as I got older, people started giving me stuff, you know? So it's like, I'm getting something out of it. It's helping me get into school. It's paying for books, it's paying for food. I have somewhere to stay, you know? Now that I'm in a place of enlightenment and really realizing how damaging those things were, and it really makes me embarrassed. In that moment, when you look at that present moment and then thinking about what your history has been and the years of abuse and, and sexual trauma that you've gone through, do you feel like in that moment you were in a place where you were defending yourself against any other person? No, I don't think I was taking out any thing on him because I feel like I've reconciled those things. Um, in that moment for him as it relates to him, I had said several times throughout the night to stop this. Mm -hmm. And you told me you understood. And so as I'm literally standing there waiting for my Uber to come get me, I can't go run in a in a in a in a, in a car or whatever like this. I'm like like if you keep touching me I'm gonna hit you. And that would have been for anybody, any any guy, woman, man or child mm -hmm. that kept touching me in a sexual way after I told Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, so I was the only one filming that scene. Um, as you see, one of those angles was like, it wasn't moving because it was, I don't have the phone, but it is what it is. Um, when it came down to that scene, um, it was quite emotional. Um, especially in green screen, some of the stuff that Oliver was saying was it did kind of hit home, um, mm -hmm. slight relatable. Um, I definitely felt for him in that moment, um, especially like, you know, you're constantly dealing with this every single, like, as you grow up. Um, and that's honestly unfortunate and it's really sad and I hate that. Um, I definitely apologize um, when we talked about it in green screens and again, it's crazy. Yeah, my, my heart will always go out to queer people who are navigating spaces as a young child and uh, having to sort of figure out how to mask themselves for survival's sake, mm -hmm. uh, where they feel like this traumatic thing happened to them. And they there's not one adult in their life that they feel comfortable expressing this trauma to. And I feel like, you know, the LGBT community is the most resilient community on the planet because a lot of our counterparts could not survive. Yes. Could yes. not survive the shoes that we feel at such a young age. I feel like that's why we are so mature because we had to grow up and learn survival and assimilation into society at such a young age. <clears throat> yes. So kudos. And it's a lot. I mean, you know, um, especially like when we come out and how our parents take that and, you know, some parents can take it very negative. Some parents can be, you know, very supportive. Um, I'm not really going to speak on my situation, but I will say that it was pretty dark um, and I had to navigate life, you know, the best way I could. So that's why I said some of the situations that um, Oliver said in his green screens was relatable. Um, and I definitely felt for him in that moment. And I apologize because um, it's life is hard. Life is hard. And yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And shout out. I mean, I feel like, you know, a lot of people were mentioning how many therapy scenes, uh, therapy scenes that we have in the season. We really want to drive home the importance of mental health. And I think yeah. a lot of folks have not really caught on to how it really bleeds into every aspect of your life. If your mental is not good, your like your mental health takes a toll on your physical health, stress you know, causes, you know, different stomach bacteria, your heart beats uh, at, uh, you know, different rates. Like it takes a physical toll on your actual body. So fixing the mental 
healing from the things that you need to heal from that a lot of us as queer people keep dormant is pivotal, honestly, as an adult. So mm-hmm. I hope that these scenes allow people to just know how to start the conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Andre. <laughs> yes. Um, mental health is definitely real. Um, I've definitely had a lot of episodes a lot of episodes of my own self um, these past few months dealing with my own personal situations while also putting out a show. Um, Kudos to you. Yeah. Because a lot yeah. of people don't know what Andari was dealing with this whole season. That's a <sighs> record for my friends of grace. Y'all got to give my friends some grace. Because with everything going on, I said, I don't bother him. I check in. <laughs> I'll be I'll be there for support. It's, it's, a, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. It's it's definitely it's definitely a lot. Um TTV says since the reunion is not happening, what were the reunion colors? The reunion colors was all white. It was all white. Let's go in with clean for 2024. It was heaven. all heaven. It was all in the skies and everything, but Stay tuned. Um, all right, so we're gonna get to the last scene of the night and then we're going to move on to something else. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. Take over with dating. And dating has been a fool. Like all of us are creatives and we never know what we can learn from each other. Right. But if we always are so distant with the wedge forced between everybody because of personal issues, mm-hmm. I feel like we'll never men like we'll never mold as one and be this power group that can go out and do bookings together and mm-hmm. host gigs together and do all type of things but but one thing i will say i feel like i have accomplished so much this year yeah um i have shed a light on a situation as far as hiv and aids you know hopefully helping people get out and get tested being a part of that campaign still obtaining celebrity clients left and right mm-hmm. staying busy yeah. and the salon i um actually started at a salon that i'm gonna be able to offer classes in now right. which was something i was hesitant about because i was like uh getting back into a shop but now it opens up so many more doors and so many more avenues to help me elevate to the point <laughs> where i'm like dominic you just gotta live for you stop thinking about what everybody gonna say or what everybody gonna think and just do what's best for me. I'll be honest with you. I think I talked to you. I want to move to Houston. Honestly, right. I really did. But I said, as far as my stability and my foundation that I built in Atlanta, I feel like it's best for me to stay here another year and see what that may give. And there's nothing wrong with evolving as well. Mm-hmm. And just really looking at the whole scope of how everything has been over, let's say, the last six months. Yeah. Or even just the last year in your case, and just kind of the ups and downs that you've had to deal with, you know, from yeah. your previous relationship to starting back over with dating. And, and dating has been a fool. I know you called me about yes, it. Yes, you yeah. know, and it's different because I am single and I don't have that second opinion or that person to push me when I wake up. Like I, I was ready to get into a room and yell at a bitch and slap a bitch. Now I still will and you know it, but I've, I've become more reserved. Uh-huh. Like. I'm gonna let you spark it off before I just be the aggressor. I've learned to stop doing it. Yeah. As tough as being single has been for me, I've actually found it to be very rewarding as well. I know I always say I'm alone, I'm alone, but just seeing how I've made it through this past year by myself, paying all my bills on my own, I'm on the up and up. And just being single has made it even better because I don't feel like I've had somebody to do it for me or help me get it. Like, it's all me. Nick me. <laughs> Try not to cry. Um, so shout out to Dominique. Shout out to Dominique. Um, Dominique's story this season honestly was very it hit home. It was very relatable to my own situations, um, from relationships to um um oh yeah yeah shout out to dominique um i appreciate dominique for being so open to you know showing everybody you know what you're going through especially with your relationship like you was in an eight year i was in a seven year so it's like you know 
I, I get it. I get it. And I'm still dealing with it. Like, I'm still trying to figure it out. So that's when, when you said, Jamar, like, your mental and everything, baby, I was out. Yeah. Week. Every single week. But one thing I like that Dominique, um, one thing I like about this scene is that Dominique really talked about, like, you know, staying true to himself, being more focused, um, you know, taking care of your dogs. Yeah. So shout out to Dominique on that. Um, but that scene definitely hit home. Like, I think that's probably why I was a little late today, y'all. So sorry, because I was just editing the scene and I stopped and I was just literally just sitting here like, wow, because it hit home. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, so that's my girl. Uh, if I don't call Dominique in 48 hours, he's gonna assume there's beef and probably will end up coming to my house. But um, every <laughs> the, st the storylines that you know Dominique has had uh, across ma mainly season five and six, uh, you know, dealing with the relationship and just kind of you know going through independence. Him and I have talked about uh, personally, so he's you know let me in on everything that goes on with him and i'm proud of my friend i really am he's yeah. you know one of the most resilient people i know so uh shout out to him i said i was going to definitely choke and you know where her out if she decided to leave me and move to houston so i was going to definitely discourage that because no um <laughs> but no that's my girl we we talk every day if not every other day so uh yeah shout out to dominique Dominique has definitely grown. Dominique has definitely grown. But I mean, I was always a Dominique fan since season four, to be honest, because let's talk about it. When we did the casting call, it was me and Kevon when we did the casting call for season four. Um, Dominique came in. I think it was the cow boots and everything, the whole cow nine outfit, all of that stuff. I said, yes, you ain't got to talk. Yes, yes, yes. And guess what? He delivered all three seasons. He was a part of this show. Shout out to Dominique. Shout out to you know, I just gave because you know the during season the the airing of season four, I told him like you know I love the fashions and Dominique sent me I think the first not the first round the second round of, uh, confessional outfit that he had with the uh, the blue suit on and like the little the puffs I had that outfit for like a good year and a half at least mm -hmm. just in my closet as a collectible and she just stole it back from me. Stupid bitch, oh, love her. Wow. <laughs> I love her. I love her. This is how we show love. But no, I, I appreciate it because she ain't know me from a, you know, anybody. And she sent it away when I was living in uh, California. So <laughs> she sent that to my mailbox and I got it. So I appreciate that for that. That was, was that the baby blue? Yeah. Know. Yeah. I'll be knowing. I wore that in our interview with him and Troy when the baby yeah. was born. On the, on the prelude, the, the, the little baby was born in that episode. Yes, I, yes, I iconic. Kind of. Yes, <laughs> yes. Dominique definitely delivers. Um, love Dominique down. Yes, we love you, iconic. Yes, make sure y'all follow Dominique. If you got a dog, take it to her. Oh, damn, I'm a bring Bella. Yeah. I'm a bring Bella. I think she had a dog right now. I think she want to go outside, but. As long as she don't poop in my house, we'll be all right. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, because she is literally... Oh, now you coming back. Hey, Bella Noche. Come here. Come, Come on here. to the camera. The, uh, the mascot of Chase. Come on. Y'all look at the mascot, Bella. Mm. Oh, girl, I don't want that. I don't want that kiss, baby. Yeah. Okay. Kicking. Wait. Huh? Her breast still kicking. Baby, because I know mine used to be. What's your breath smell like? Huh. Give me a kiss. Hey, Bella. Hey, Bella, no change. Anyway, all right, so we're gonna keep going. Um, right. um, I think that was it as far as the scenes. Um, um, I think that was it as far as the scenes. I mean, of course, we had the closings. I mean, I can just play that in the background for now. Um, I will say, oh shoot, what did I just do? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh. okay, oh. okay, oh. okay, period. <laughs> um, so I do want to say this before we move on to our next segment. Um, in the after show, um, 
shout out to everybody that was a part of this season, honestly, um, from production to cast. Um, shout out to you, Jamar, because honestly, without you, I wouldn't be able to complete this season. I would have had to stop filming to go find somebody else that would help me fil finish the rest of the show. Um, shout out to Kiri Williams. Kiri Williams, um, she was a producer slash camera operator on the show as well. She was a part of the show from season three to season, a little bit of season six. Um, yeah. Kiri has always been my role dog. You know, she gave me some really good advice on how to handle situations. So shout out to her. I hope she is doing well out here in this earth. Um, who else was a part of the season? Shout out to De'Aaron for helping me out, you know, especially when, um, you know, I needed some help. When Jamar had to work, baby, and I had a scene I had to get, he was definitely there. So I definitely appreciate De'Aaron for helping me. Shout out to Brandon Victrum. Um, Brandon always says that he is, you know, um, learning from me. And I'm like, baby, I learn every time. I'm learning every season. So, um, <laughs> Shout out to him. If you don't know Brandon Victrum, he is over at Pop Up Productions. He is the executive producer of Set It Off ATL. Um, I know their season is currently on hiatus, and I'm rooting for him to return because I don't ever want somebody to give up or just stop on something that they have worked truly hard for. Um, am I missing somebody? Shout out to Scotty by Nature. Scotty by Nature. Um, every, you know when when she came in the town. You didn't mind to just say, hey, girl. <laughs> hey, yes, girl. episode two. Episode yes. two. Yes, yes. Um, shout out to Scotty by Nature. Um, who else am I missing? Shout out to Markel. Shout out to Markel uh, when they did the Houston. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Thank you. I'm going to do this. Do this. It's that was real. <laughs> Lose everything and y'all watch me laugh at during the journey. I've gained so many new people in my life. I've lost a lot of people. Done so much in these two years. I just can't believe that it's coming to an end. This year alone has been one of my most difficult yet blessed years of my life. I've grown I'm so- sorry to hear that. It might help to reach out to someone you trust. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I just had to play that real quick. Because um, why does she activate? I don't even know. No one I don't, even, I don't even want to say the name because she might activate over here. And Nobody even even called upon her. Like the government. You know, I, it happened. It happened with Jaytwan as well. I think. Um, but they didn't say they didn't say her name, so I don't know why it activated. Um, but anyway, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Who else can I shout out before I give out my next piece of shout Reggie. out? Reggie. Yes, let's shout out Reggie, 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 Reggie. Yes, um, let's shout out Reggie. Um, Reggie also was a part of the platform um, when we did um, Kane's Adult Toy Party. I also saw him for We Were Born's photo shoot. Shout out mm -hmm. to Reggie. Um, he was also part of In the Mix with Twigs. He did he did the filming for that show as well. So shout out to you. Um, shout out. I see a little. I see some comments about other people need to be credited or shout out. So. Yes, we're going to give a huge shout out to Oliver Twix <laughs> um, as the uncredited producer, because um, Oliver definitely from scenes, at, from seasons after seasons after seasons, definitely gave a lot and, you know, brought the cast together to do something different, such as Chasing the Beat. So make sure you do watch that coming soon to Chasing Reality, exclusively to Chasing Reality. I'm actually really excited to see what he put together when that does happen. Um, I also see... Nicole Ray Hare. Hey, Nicole. Shout out to Nicole Ray for being an uncredited producer. Baby, okay. <laughs> okay, Nicole Ray as the silent producer. Okay, okay. Um, And shout out to everybody in the web world that has been very supportive of the platform. Um, I do also want to shout out TTB. I also want to shout out Patches. I also want to shout out Angela Roche. Um, again, I want to shout out Scotty by Nature. Make sure you go subscribe to those channels. Um, I want to shout out, oh my gosh, Shua, I see you often in the comments. And I read your DM that you sent me a few weeks ago, or I think last month. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, yes. Um, love you too. Yes, 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 yes. Um, 
Yeah. Shout out to the season six cast. Um, again, shout out to Oliver for being a talent again on this season after I asked him not to come back. But she still wanted to come back. And so I tried to give her everything she asked for. Um, shout out to shout out to Dominique again. Um, again, like I said, for three seasons, you have definitely showcased your talent, your work, your chase, your um personality from your relationship to everything. Shout out to you for just being a team player and being able to showcase those things. Shout out to Seven, um, also known as Drew Friday, again, when she's on the stage. Um, in that clipping right here, she just got her name changed. She called me. She said, I'm going to be at the courthouse at this time. Let's do it. I'm there. I, I would love to see it. Those are things I would like to capture. You getting your name changed? Let's do it. And we was only probably at that courthouse for probably like 10 minutes and boom, it happened. So shout out to her for getting it done. Okay, so this um, shout out again to Wayne the Pain. Shout out again to Wayne. Wayne has been with me since season three. Um, I know it's been, a, you know, rocky, but at the same time, Wayne has definitely gave his all the most he can, especially managing Kendra. Um, shout out to Kendra. Um, she has also been on here since season three. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to her for being able to continue to showcase her moments and everything. I know it wasn't easy and I know a lot of unfortunate events happened, but um, shout out to her. Um, shout out to Troy. Hey, girl. <laughs> hey, sister. <laughs> Shout out to Troy. Oh my God. I love Troy. Shout out to Troy. Um, um honey, baby, I love me some Troy. We have so many just memes of Troy's faces that come from the filming of the show that I just use as reaction shots. So shout out to Troy. Shout out to Troy, honey. Shout out to Troy. Um I'm going by the poster. I'm trying to see the poster in my head. Um, shout out to Rico Castadon. Shout out to Rico. I want to say Rico and Jay Amore, best confessionals, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> always had me laughing. Always had me laughing. I will say that. I'm going to take you out in just a second. Um, shout out to um, Rico and Jay Amore, but um, shout out to Rico for being able to come on this season, giving us a little bit more of your music, and being able to um, talk about those emotional moments, especially with your ex-partner. Um, I know that stuff was very triggering. And then also getting the comments and the opinions of other people's. I know that really like, you know, impacted you a lot. Um, I can understand it. Um, but shout out to Rico. I blame me. Make sure you stream that. Me. Buy that song. Make sure you also stream and buy a bad B song. That is the song I love at the gym. Make sure you also stream on God. Make sure you check out Rico's albums, EPs, and singles because Rico definitely can rap, spit, and all of that. Um, shout out to Jay Moore. Jay Moore, honey. My favorite scene of all time with Jay Moore was season five when we did the um the final fashion show. Beautiful. Love oh, it. Oh, yes. I yeah. am fashion. I am fashion. And I know that was quite emotional for him because I think it was a tribute to his grandmother. I might be wrong. Yes. Sorry, Jay. So many. Okay. Um, um, but Jay, yes. Um, yes. Yes. Shout out to Jay. Um, so we got seven. And then when we go up, who do we have? Shout out to Tony Bryce. Um, shout out hey. to Tony Bryce. Mother Lush and Plush. Shout out to Tony Bryce. So let me tell you a little backstory about Tony Bryce real quick. So I asked Tony, I was like, bro, I want you on season six. And she told me, she responded right back and she said, baby, I don't do reality TV. I'm nervous. I don't know about that. I really don't. But she she said she loved Chasing. She's seen the show in the past and all this other stuff. And she was just like, I don't know. But I told her, I said, I think you should do it. And on top of that, it would, you know, we would see a, something different in our community because we never really touched on ballroom in the Atlanta market. Um, so I would I definitely wanted to get Tony. And on top of that, her being on P Valley, I just love her. And I just wanted to, you know, let her see how reality is. I mean, granted, it didn't go in the best light at the end, but I hope she got everything that she wanted and was able to showcase everything. I hope I edited everything in the best light for her and things like that. So shout out to Tony. Bryce, aka yeah. Mother Lush. Love Tony. 
Next time, invite me to BET. Um, okay. <laughs> Show me where I need to audition. I'm an actress, too. Oh, right. Right. I'll be one. I'll be one. Um, <laughs> out to, um, Tonka Garcon. Shout out to Tonka Garcon. Um, was shout out so to so oh, okay. What was that? I'm sorry. I was it was it was so dope to work with Tonka because I did uh get to watch her on Legendary and I was definitely cheering for the House of Garcon mainly at the time because I knew Stasha uh, yeah. from in the uh, in the uh, drag community, but Tonka was like the lead character of that season. So to see and be able to work with her on this season was very surreal. So we love Tonka. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to Tonka. Um, Tonka and I, I used to call Tonka um, every week and just say, how did you feel about the episode? What was your thoughts? Because I was nervous, especially, you know, I didn't do a casting call. So Tony and Tonka were the two I picked. And I was just like, how you feeling? I'm not hearing nothing from you. What I done did, I just want to know. I'm just a little nervous, you know, because I want to make sure, you know, especially because I invited them to be a part of this season, I definitely wanted them to be able to enjoy what they put out. So yeah. um, shout out to Tonka Garcon. Um, shout out to um, who's up in the list. Shout out to King Kane. Um, shout out to King Kane for being a part of the season. Um, shout out to you. Um, uh, you had a few moments that was quite funny, but you also showcased your chase. Um, and I hope everything is going well with your business. So shout out to you. Um, shout out to um, Willa Michelle, baby. Willa be the models, baby. Shout out to Miss Willa, honey. Let's talk about Miss Willa cooking, honey. <laughs> Listen. I told Willa from last season of Chasing the Beat when she made that, uh, what was it, uh, sh gr uh, shrimp and grits. I ain't never seen no shrimp and grits with the consistency like that. And I said, baby, hey. we was up in there eating goods. Eating. Okay. And then she also, I think she made the same, if it's not a similar recipe for Seven's Housewarming this season, where we had the shrimp and grits in the cut, uh, shrimp and grits in the little cups and whatnot. Girl be burning in that kitchen. I can't, can't nobody take that away from her. Willis cooking is off the chain. And that's no shade. <laughs> yes. Shout out to um Miss Willa Michelle. Um, I know last season it was a lot going on personal personally with her, so she wasn't able to give her all season five, but this season I definitely see her like killing it. So shout out to Willa. Um continue to do you, Miss Willa, and everything. Um, who else do we have? Um, we shout out Wayne, we shout out Kendra, and shout out, um, I think last but not least, is We Were Born. Shout out to J. Twan and Berlin. Um, this is your second go around on the show. Um, period. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. Um, shout out to y'all. Um, I also just want to <laughs> give a shout out um, just to past se um, season cast members um, from season five, four, three, two, and one. Um, I hope that when you were on this show that you were able to, you know, make something more or, you know, um, get those, the following, the support that y'all wanted from this show and everything. Because, again, that's what it's all about. Um, yes, there is. This is a reality TV world. People want to be like, you know, housewives and um, loving hip hop and stuff like that. However, make sure you make sure you um, showcase your talent. So shout out to. Um, everybody that was a part of this Chasing Atlanta realm. Um, and then last but not least, um, shout out to Twan Dixon. And I'm going to bring up Antoine Dixon, the the counselor, I guess the official Chasing Atlanta counselor, because, I mean, hey, we see you all the time. So let me go ahead and bring up Antoine Dixon to the stage. Hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm doing good. Good. Hey, Jamar. Hey, it's good to see you. I know I look a little bit different. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, um, let's talk about something real quick. So, this season we saw you a lot. A lot. Uh, a, a whole lot. more than what I thought I was gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> How did you 
feel about um um the filming of this season um and the things that you had to do and the conversations you had to have with cast members? Yeah, I I, I honestly thought that just from my position, I, I think it went well. Um, you know, I saw someone ask how I think they asked how did this come about with me being on the show, but it was yeah. through it was through Dominique. Um and and so just the kind of backstory with that, I re I remember when Dominique called me. I think you all were casting for season four in 2019, and he called me and was like, "I'm gonna audition." I was like, "You need to let them know your who the celebrities you work for." I was like, I I was very pushing for him to be on the show, and he was he. I remember him telling me he said, "If I make it, I'm gonna bring you on." And I was like, "I'm I'm not going on that damn show. I'm just gonna <laughs> watch it and." Let it be that. And then when Troy spaghetti dinner, brunch, whatever that was, <laughs> it opened the door for me to Troy hates when I call it a spaghetti. I don't know what it was. Like, but the the brunch. Birthday, birthday and, brunch, yes. Right. And so that really sealed the deal for me to come on the show. And I, you know, I say, you know it, I'm just gonna I'm gonna make the best of it. And you know, I tell people all the time when they ask me, you know, because I am licensed in Alabama and I'm licensed in Georgia, but this show opened the door for me to become licensed in Georgia, all because of what they saw in season four in that one episode. So thank you. Thank you, and Dario, for trusting Dominique to, you know, you know, give me that opportunity. So I, I as it relates to season four and season five and even now season six, I just think it went well. Um, I hope that each person that I worked with this season received something, you know, yes. re receive something, take it and apply it in some dynamic or another, but as long as they received something. Um, even when you text me earlier today about the episode, the scene with Nick and I, I never Ryan. know. Yeah, I never know how these scenes are, are gonna be. I, I know what we talk about in the moment, but because we film so many months and weeks in advance, we really don't be remembering what we said. And yeah. so it took me a while to text you back and I was like, okay, I, I think I know why. And so when I saw it myself, I said, wow, it, it came out uh, came out really good. So I am very excited. I'm excited to see what's going to be next just for you, Dario, for you, Jamar, and uh, just everyone that I've, you know, have seen on the show, everyone that I've worked with on the show. And I will always give Dominique his flowers because you, you just, you never know how God is going to put you in certain position and and connect you with certain people. So thank thank you all for just trusting me, even even the naysayers. Yeah. Yeah, because in the beginning they was questioning it and I'm like, um, this is a licensed professional counselor. Don't play really? now. Don't play one of my licenses that actually about to turn into a supervisor license here in the next couple of weeks. So the, the price, price is going up. <laughs> period. Period. Yeah. Oh well. Um, I definitely liked. Um, one of the things I really liked was when you had the conversation with Dominique season five, um, yeah. where um Dominique pretty much opened up a lot. You know, especially after that um altercation he had with Rico Casadine. Right. Um, you know, that scene right there was like really, really good. And I think a lot of people started to realize like, yes, like I I like Twan Dixon. Like, cause I think at season four, it was just like, it was new. So people was just so, you know, but season five, definitely. And then this season with you being there, especially talking to a few of the cast members and including myself, you know, off the, off the record here, um, you know, talking about the whole mental health situation because 2023 was a lot for everyone. It and was. So, you know, we just had to work around what we had, but also, you know, um, um, take in to the um, emotions and the situations that the cast was dealing with. So shout out to you for just being there to be able to talk um, to them and, you know, everything like that. So shout out to you. Absolutely. I, I, I think that it was important, you know, on camera and off camera to really just check in, check in with you as the, you know, as a producer and just everything 
different roles that you have, checking in with the cast and things of that nature, um, and just being a support for them on and off camera. That was very important because before I go into any scene with any of them, I always ask, what, what do you want the world to see? Because what you put out there, that's what they're going to know. What yes. is the world to see that someone can take and say, you know what, I relate to Willa, I relate to Seven, I relate to Tony and Nick and Troy and even Oliver. What is it that you want them to say that that's me too? And so even, you know, me have the opportunity to share even my own experience. I honestly forgot I had told Oliver about my own, you know, sexual abuse growing up from the age of five with it being my own next door neighbor. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just, our healing process and how I ran into him about a year ago at, at the club and just it, it so a lot of that does happen and so when people think that these shows are scripted and things like that these people are putting their real lives on the line out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And so I mean honestly with them speaking, um you just never know who you touch that watches this as well. Um because you know, everybody is going through stuff. Everybody. Yeah. It can be something that they're holding in a closet or it can be something that they're out and open with. Um, and especially within our queer community, we're always going through something. So, right. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. You know, I'm always busy, but I know your birthday is this weekend. So happy early birthday. Yeah, thank you. I'm thank you. Yes, I'm going to see you on the 28th. And is. We're gonna and we're going to go to brunch and we're going to have fun. <laughs> Period. Just yes, the two. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Just the two. I, need, I already know Nika's going to hit me up like, oh, you're coming this week, that weekend. But yes, I will be in town in a, what, two weeks from now. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I would definitely see you, but you know, just contact me whenever. I will definitely see you next week. Uh -oh. Uh oh, did we switch okay. positions? <laughs> it, it, it did. It just popped. I, I guess your phone gonna die or something like that. But yeah. um, yes. So um, I will see you next week. <laughs> yes, yes. See you on the twenty eighth. Have a good one. Love y'all. All right. Love you too. All right. All right. So um, I need to. I'm going to give the link to somebody, but I'm waiting for my other special guest to. Text me back. I hope he didn't fall asleep. Um, uh, but I'm gonna give it about two more minutes, maybe one. And um, oh, 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 okay, he's here. He's here. Okay, so let me go ahead and do the introduction real quick. All right, <laughs> this person. Oh my god. Uh huh. You saw that shaking. Uh huh. Yes, this person, without him, you would not have this show today, period. Um, this person I met um, back in 2015, um, he hit me up on Jack and he was just like, hey, I want you to be an actor in my show. And I said, okay, cool, no problem. We do the show. We, um, I'm acting in the show. I'm editing the show also. So I'm learning, you know, the ropes and all those things. After the show was all said and done, we became really good friends. And then a few months later, he was like, we should do a reality show. And then that was the birth of what you see today, Chasing Atlanta and all these other successful shows. So the person I would love to bring up, it is my honor because We've had a conversation last month. A lot of people probably know that it was very distant between us for a very long time. But we had a conversation last month. As I was ending this show, it wouldn't be right if I did not bring him up here. So let's go ahead and bring up MF and Kevon Burns. Oh, hi. Uh, Hello. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am doing fabulous. Oh, yes. you and that well, damn story. <laughs> hey, <laughs> sorry. Hey, you said what now? So you and that story. 
that Jack story. You love story. telling that story. You love telling that you know Jack I, story. You know, you know I got to tell it. <laughs> you know I got to tell it. You know I got to tell it. I love it. I love it. You know I got to tell yeah. it. Oh, my so gosh. He, yes, yes, yes. Six seasons. Six seasons. Six I'm proud of you, Dario. Thank you. You've done Thank a great you. job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I miss you. Oh, I miss you too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> why you, why, what's up, that? You said what? Why you sound so quiet? Do I? Can you not hear me? I hear you. You just sound, you know, quiet. But I mean, I know that's Girl, what you, you give up. Anyway. Right. I'm always quiet. Hello. Would you like me to pass you the bottle? <laughs> I'm actually, I'm not feeling well right now under the weather, so um, I can't be drinking right now. <laughs> uh, we were having the rain, so it's the best. I heard yeah. it. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But how do you feel oh. like the show you created lasts this long and kind of become what it is today? Um, It's, it's a joy moment. I'm, I'm pleased. I'm it's it's everything to me. The fact that he kept kept it going is phenomenal, you know. Okay. And not just the editing part, because I've given you your flowers for the editing years ago, but now I'm just giving you your flowers for everything because you're pretty much doing everything, and I love it, and I love to see it. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the growth, lot. yeah, the growth is there. I see it. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot. And shout out to you, Kevon, because I mean, even, um, you know, when you wanted to um, work on your show, The Shit We Do For Love, I mean, shout out to you. When it first came out, I was definitely in the um, premiere looking at it and just, you know, um, like, wow. Because at first you wasn't like editing anything, I don't think. No. Just like, a, you know, just like, a you know, a little few things here and there. Like I know, was learning like, from you. Yeah. Child. Yeah. Do you still use you still use Adobe or are you on Final Cut? I still use Adobe from the pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have not I have not done the um well Final Cut, that's what you use. Mm-hmm. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. I do want to try Adobe. Yeah. I heard Final Cut was easier. I don't know. Um, it's but easier. um the last the last season of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. What was your decision on it? Why did you so, choose? So my reasoning for really making this the final season is because I'm getting older. I'm getting older. And I feel like, you know, doing this show every year, it does trap me in like a box because I'm more focused on the talent versus my own self. Um, I think last year, I'm reading these comments, my bad. I think, let me just, let me just move this out of the way. Um, I, th I think last year, I think last year, um, in the very beginning of last year, I did say, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to be 29 this year. And I want to spend my last year in my 20s to basically just focus on myself and also, you know, restructure this business. So that way it's, you know, ran a little differently. And we also, you know, have that structure, that foundation. Yeah. Um, because for years, it's just been putting out content and, you know, not really having like a actual structure right. here, you know. And that's, you know, that's what I really want to work on. I mean, I got my degree in business. That's my focus. Um, and yeah, it was just, it, it does become overwhelming at times. Um, and I think yeah. I just need to... <laughs> We uh, talked about it. Uh -huh. We talked about it. <laughs> yeah. um, it definitely becomes overwhelming. Um, you knew, like, in the first, you know, few seasons, and we had to deal with, you know, so many cast members and all that drama that came with it. Um, you know, this off-camera stuff. Before, before Instagram had lives, we had to deal with, you know, the back-and-forth BS and, you know, our situation and stuff like that. So... A lot was put into this brand. A lot was. A lot. And so and so I just think, you know, especially when we haven't really spoken like what a year and a half or two. I'm not it's sure. Longer than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Two. Maybe three. I don't know. Three. I thought um, it was three. Three. Okay. So this is twenty twenty four, so yeah, it had to be three. Um 
you know, I was I was really sad. I was really sad um, when you departed from the platform because I really did feel like I did. Well, let's wrong. let's tell the people what really happened, though. Uh, do they know? Because I know I heard that I was fired. How was you fired? That's what I. How heard. was you fired? I just I don't know. That's, that's how, do I, I heard. how do I fire you? <laughs> so how let's do I fire people. you? Come on, no, if, if we really. If, if you want to go there, <laughs> you want to yeah. go there. I don't think you told the people that, but that's what the people are saying. So that's why we need to set the record straight. Okay, so let's set the record straight. Fine. So we was <laughs> um. So we was um. Let's see, where was we at? So this was before season four, the group scene, Troy's um birthday brunch. Um. You know, me being an Aquarius and me being stubborn, of course. Um, I really just didn't know what was going on between us um, as a friend and also doing business. I felt like, right. you know, we were two different balances when it came down to producing the show. Um, I felt like that probably happened on earlier seasons because of the different dynamics you may have had with certain cast members. True? No? Maybe. Maybe okay. The different uh, dynamics between the cast members, as in what? So you know, um, if we go back to like season three, you know, maybe you and another individual on the cast, you know, y'all may have had something, and so all these assume <laughs> assumptions and accusations, yeah. where they basically, where they basically felt like myself and Kiri was like, you know, targeting them. I mean. I'd rather not say the name, but if we got to give a hint, it's somebody that's on this season. So, I mean, so, I mean, all of that came into play. And then you also had season one. You also had the producer that was in Dallas. You know, you also had the LLC thing. All of those things was just really causing a division between our friendship. And so I was really confused. So when it came down to um, before we did the birthday brunch, or the birthday br the birthday brunch thing for Troy when it came down to that situation um when you told me that you was in Los Angeles for your um film yeah, yeah, yeah. yes when you told us you was in Los Angeles for your film i thought that you would be back in time for the scene um right. however you was not so then when i um i'm trying to stay here <laughs> when i um when i <laughs> Look, it's it's the wine, it's the wine, and then it was long ago. But um, listen, long story short, <laughs> I came back. I reached out to him. I was blocked. <laughs> well, that was well, that was because no. So let's go back because you can finish the story for me. Let's go back. Let's go back. So when I asked you where was you at, when are you coming back? You told us that oh, I'm, still, I'm still in LA and all this other stuff, it's gonna be a few days. And that's when I question you. I don't wanna say what I said, but what I will say is that I question you, okay, so if you're not going to be on this season like full time, then why are you producing this season? Right. But the so season you get, just started, right? So was it was like, like or... Yeah, it just started. But I had not missed not any scenes either. And then I you also have... had other people working for me. Mm -hmm. So I felt like you was just probably in your feelings. I don't know. I was probably. Because I was like, well, you're not here. So yeah, I'm going to be here. I did tell you I was going to come back one day. And then you did, tell, you did tell me you were going to come back for that I scene. I ended up coming back <laughs> that next week. OK, so after the scene. Yeah. But what did you also text me? We're going to talk when I get back. You never told yeah. me that you were going to talk to me the day, like you were going to talk to me the week after that thing. Well, I I'm thinking that you be back. I'm thinking that you're going to be back in time for the scene or the next day or whatever. What a scene! The scene yes. is what the next day, right? Baby, I don't I remember. Told you I was not going to be able to make it, <laughs> and you got mad. And I said uh, we would talk but, about but it talk, when, when I get back. Okay. And Kiri and then, at the yard hold on, we would talk about this when I get back. Click. And then the phone hung up, and that was it. Okay. So then after that, I just stayed another week. 
And then once I got back to Atlanta, blocked. I was blocked. I was blocked on Instagram, Facebook. Because how many how many days did I have to wait for us to have a conversation, Kevon? I did not care anymore. Okay. But that's that's what it was. That's what it was. Okay. So Kevon was apparently fired, but I didn't fire you. I just blocked you. But I know. I know. And then on top of that, I think before we did the scene. You were working on your new production, the shit we do for love. So right, I that's thought why you, I didn't really give it too much. Yeah, yeah. And you know, well, like there, you said there we before, there we, we, we was already going through a lot of shit the last three years during the whole three seasons. So mm-hmm. a lot of stuff was building up. So of course, I was like, Phew. so you did, so you didn't even want to just have a conversation about that. Mm-mm. How would I have a conversation when I was blocked? Okay. Okay. And I want to reach out to somebody. Can you reach out to Undario? You know, Undario, you know you got your petty ways. <laughs> you know you have them. But I don't like playing those games. Mm-hmm. But okay. I do love you. Well, I love you as a person. And the editor. Well, <laughs> well, again, like I said, um, when we did meet up last month, like I said, and I'm going to say it to all 1090 on the on the um on here gagged a little bit um that i do apologize to you again kevon if you felt like i have just let you stray away from the brand um with me blocking you um but again like i said that was because of me getting in my feelings and on top of that needing you for a scene that you did originally say that you were going to be at on top of that having all of these other issues that we've had in the past. So I just felt like that was just the icing on the cake. But moving forward, like I've talked to you before, I would love to, you know, move forward and, you know, build something with you. Either you can come back, you know, come back to Chase in reality. I did get your text about you wanting to do something else. So, you know, we can definitely talk about that. Um, And we can move on from there. If that's what you would like to do. Yes, we can talk about it. All right. Yes. Okay. Well, besides from that, if we've moved on from that, um, anything else? Oh, no. Um, No. So what are you doing now in the creator world? Focusing on me and my piece. Period. (laughs) No. um, Yeah, I'm doing that, and then I'm also doing a short film. I just started doing a podcast, so that's Period. out right now. What's the name of the podcast? Tell the people. Life Uncensored. We talk about yes. everything life. It's with my two best friends. Okay. So, yeah. It's fun. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, where can we watch it at? Can we watch on the Keyvon Burns Online YouTube? Yes. My YouTube Period. Show. Okay. And how often do we... Um, are we going to see like the episodes? Saturdays and Mondays. Saturdays and Mondays. All right. Well, um, you heard it from Kevon. Y'all want to go tune into his Life Uncensored podcast? It is on Kevon Burns Online YouTube channel, and they film it on Saturdays and Mondays. It cut off at first. Yeah, yeah. Mondays. Saturdays and Mondays. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kevon. Thank you for having me. And continue yes. doing your great work, sir. Nice meeting you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you have a wonderful night. And I will talk to you later. All righty. Thanks. All right. Bye. All right. So um, let's see. So um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm waiting for one more person if they want to come up before I get into the next thing. And then we will open up the lines. Or are you good, Jamar? Because I know it's midnight o'clock. Oh, fine. I'm having a great time. Y'all in the comments, fuck each and every one of y'all that are clocking me right now. Let, me live, let me live my greatest life. Clocking. <laughs> let me live my greatest life, damn it. <laughs> clocking. Clocking. I see, I see what y'all saying. I see... What y'all saying? I don't know what they're talking about. I'm just over here living my good, 
Christian Caucasian line. Baby, just. Lord have mercy. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, is this is the person coming up or no? Who's the person in the group? Put it in the private chat. Is it the person that the Apple's Hop probably been texting? Say it again. Who was the person that you put it in the private chat? I'm gonna just um I got you. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and answer a few of these questions here. Let's oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. So we do have a special cast member that is coming up to talk to us um, or to share maybe thoughts on the episodes or the season or everything else of Chasing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce him, her. You may know her from season three. You may know her from season four, five, and six. You know, people, some people say she's the face. Some people say she's the star. We're going to go ahead and introduce this Oliver Twigs. Well, one thing we do know is that he, she, I, forever is the head nerd in charge. <laughs> I, for, I forgot to say that. I forgot to say that. Hey, Oliver, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, honey? Hey, Jamar. Hey, everyone who's watching live. Hey, Oliver. Hey. What's going on? Nothing much. I am getting ready for tomorrow. I'm yes. shooting some promo promo material. For hydraulics, um, which is actually going to be my performance for Chasing the Beat. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm just really excited about that. Hydraulics is really doing well online. So I'm just excited to be back into my music bag. The bag you guys found me in, she's back in it. Yes. Period. Uh, will you be there in Dario? Yes, I will be there. Oh, happy birthday, Theo. I believe today was Theo's birthday from In the Mix with Twix, guys. Happy birthday, Theo. He turned 35. Hey. 35. All right. Mm hmm Come on, 35. I just want to say, um, I just want to reiterate on Dario, you know, thank you so much for being a part of my origin story. You know, you forever have the ability to brag and say that you helped discover all of its wicks, you know? So I think that's pretty good. <laughs> look, 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 you came on here and you did your thing. And you came back, and you came back, and you came back, and you gave more. You did more, um, including your spinoff and everything. So shout out to you on that as well. Um, so yeah, period. I'm um, really proud of my time here, and yes. in the chasing reality Mount Rushmore, um, <laughs> Lauren definitely goes up there. Um, you know, we'll squint and say Reese G deserves to go up there as well, but definitely the third spot is mine, and we'll see who comes and takes a fourth one. Okay, okay. So does that wait? Does that mean that that you're done? I mean, she's done for right now, girl. I mean, girl, I'm girl, you know I'm not done. Don't be asking crazy questions. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just had to ask because I mean, you said Lauren and Reese, and. They are not a part of. Well, they're not doing anything for the brand anymore. I mean, so I, I mean, they're. Not, I mean, but I mean, but they still deserve their 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 right in the Hall of Fame. You know, when we think about the girls who have been pivotal to this brand, absolutely. Reese and Lauren definitely go up there, and Oliver is you know absolutely. comes third, and we'll I see agree. who we'll see who comes and takes spot number four. I agree. I agree. I heard I agree. you crown a few people in the chat earlier in the episode. Um, I wouldn't say, cr oh yeah, I crowned, um, who did I crown a big dog? Dominique, Dominique is a big dog. Dominique is definitely a big dog. I feel like, and this is no shade to anybody, really, really no shade, I'm being honest. I feel like Dominique, you know, and Dario, you know, I've told you about this casting, your casting decisions over the years, child. You know, I'm just gonna be very honest. We've talked about this. We're not going to go in deep into it, but I feel like Dominique is one that has, like, really stood the test of time, you know? Like, I think when you think about chasing Atlanta and what has contributed to the success of it, you have to give Dominique his credit, whether you like him or not. You know, she was she been turning it since she came on the show. She's been turning it, you know? She's had her own storyline. She doesn't yeah. chase after people. 
she's been her own story from day one, whether we like the book or not. She's, you know, she stood on her own. And I have to, yeah. I'll, I'll always give people that respect. Absolutely. And he deserves a it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I love Dominique. I, I love, love Dominique Dom too. I love, Remember, I love you, how you. The first scene with Dominique. Um, I did Dominique's first scene. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. How, I brought a lot of do you, people. Do you, on remember, the show. do you remember how you do you remember how you were on that scene? Like, were you awkward or what? Because I wasn't there filming that scene. I just remember what I remember distinctly right now in this moment was he just started talking about Lauren, like just so yeah. freely. And yeah. I just remember like everyone knows me and Lauren are friends. So I was just shocked on how free he was just speaking of her. And I don't know him. I, this is my first time literally meeting him, I believe. So I'm yeah. like, I don't know you. Like, you have to know that I'm going to go back and tell my friend that this stranger I don't know is now yeah. on the show talking about what the fuck he was doing in Birmingham. You know, whether it's true or not, we wasn't there, but they saying it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I've really grown to respect Dominique. I really enjoy working with Dominique. Um, on this show, he's one of the few people that I feel like, like they understand that this is a show and this is like for this arena. Um, yeah. But the 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 big unspoken part about chasing Atlanta that I don't think we talk about often. Yes, it's about the chase and getting new fans and sharing your story. But we also know that us being on YouTube is only a temporary home as we journey to find a larger, more mainstream place to call home. Um, and I feel like. A lot of people during their time, not only on Chasing Atlanta, but Chasing Reality, lose that lose that notion. Like, we're working together so that we can be somewhere else. Um, and a lot of people get stuck right here. And I, I feel like Dominique is one of the very few people I've been in contact with. Because, child, I've been, you know, I've been on Chasing Atlanta. I done tiptoed to Chasing Dallas and played with them. I done been to Chasing LA. I done been all around the red and I, 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 And I feel like he's one of the few people who understand that this is just a show that we need to be working together to like do more things and get to bigger places. And he's always been about his business in my personal opinion, you know? Yes, absolutely. So yeah. Absolutely. I love yeah. Dominique. Love Dominique. And you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, this platform is not really designed to be like a permanent home for anyone. Um, you're supposed to just use this platform to, you know, again, showcase your talent and your business and your products and your services and things of that nature. Um, so that way, when it's all said and done, you got your followings and everything like that. People can continue to follow what exactly you're doing. And I mean, Oliver, outside of the platform, you have also talked about um, you was um, talking about um, America's Next Top Model. You was also with the um, Bravo Stars. Um, you also did with Jocelyn Cabaret. Like you use your platform and kept expanding it outside of just it being chasing Atlanta. So kudos to you for doing exactly that. I mean, I knew one day these doors would close and I I never wanted to be like the rest of them and be wondering what I was going to do. Not the rest All of them. Of okay. okay. <laughs> a wise woman once said back in season three, don't be like them. And that's always been, uh, <laughs> you know, thing that I've stood by. I knew that the doors were going to close one day. I mean, that's not me being shady. And you know, I'm being 100% G right now. The doors are going to close. And I just never wanted to be one of those people who were stuck on you know, who were stuck on the last scene, you know, <laughs> Oliver Twix is my business. This is how I make my money. You know, I don't clock in anywhere else. I clock mm -hmm. in only to this gray patch bitch right here. And mm -hmm. of course the drama is always fun. And honestly, you know, now that we have the end, I've always really thanked my co-stars for giving me drama to talk about on the show, because honestly, like I've told you and Dario, no, I do thank them because my life is really uninteresting. You know, I don't do shit. So really? even though they get on my girl, really? girl, Girl, when you call me, where am I always? At home, yeah, in my underwear, with cooking in front of the computer. I don't do nothing. Neither. Um, and so the people, even though it gets on my nerves, um, in the end, it, all, it has all helped me out every season. Like, every time they've tried to paint this narrative or come after me, it's only really aided in me elevating to a higher platform, you know? Because I'm never going to fight with them. It's just going to give me the energy to do more work, to put more energy to myself in. Um, so I really do thank them. Like, I really do thank them. Because if it wasn't for them, I would be lazy, probably. Like, I probably would get comfortable, you know, and just be chilling. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Nice. Um, there was something else that I wanted to say. I want I want, I want. to um, also say, and Dario, can you, 
can you finally tell people this a couple things while I have you here? You're drinking your wine and your nice um, turtleneck, black turtleneck, and you're very comfy and cozy. Can you tell the people how you tried to fire me every season? Because every, yeah. every, uh, everyone just claims <laughs> everyone just claims that you just love me. I mean, what you do? I mean, you know, we can go ahead and let them know now. You know, now that yeah. we can I tell have, them. This. Have, but every I, season I just, you've tried I to get rid this. of me. Yes, for the record, I have this love hate relationship with Oliver. <laughs> when Oliver, when Oliver blows up my phone. I throw the phone. Um, when she no, blows that's up not my, why. Don't be dramatic. <laughs> when she blows up my phone, I close. When I see her message on my laptop, I'm closing the lid. I'm just playing. Don't be dramatic. Uh, but no, I just think the so especially with season. Well. You want me to just say every season or just say? Just be honest. Tell the people why every season you be like, girl, you're not coming back. Girl, you might as well just go ahead and go. I'm like, girl, I'm coming back. What are you talking about? Because the reason why I say you shouldn't come back is because I do think, Oliver, you have elevated above this platform, honestly. Like you just said, and like I just said, this is a temporary place. Basically, you use this to elevate. And again, you have expanded. Tony was just calling out your resume. I mean, you've been on the circle, T.S. Madison experience, Brad Love, Judy. You're doing a lot of things above and beyond. And so that's why I felt like I don't know what else I can give you. It's like, like you have maximized, you have went above this now. Like you are greater than this. And congratulations to that. Which is why I said, girl, I don't think you should come back. But I get what you're saying, why you do want to come back, because that tells me that, okay, well, Maybe I need to, you know, work some things out to make it, you know, everybody else, you know, I guess feel the same way. I, guess. I mean, which we will, you know, listen, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just going to say you, you it, do, you, you know, they're going to be back, y'all, you know, eventually we just got to, you know, the people just got to work out some things, we just <laughs> got to, you know, you know, um, but what, what I will say is the main reason why I came back is I just I never wanted to be one of those girls who got on reality TV and just like forgot about those people. Cause like, you know, I think back to chasing Atlanta season three. When I came on, it was like from it was like the thing, you know? And mm -hmm. like it was like I just overnight people was like Oliver, you know, like my life literally changed overnight. Literally changed yes. since I was on season three. And I just, I looked at people like Nene and Tamar and Kay Michelle and Jocelyn and Mariah. Like, I just looked at all these different people that I watched growing up and how they became what the people consider like the quote-unquote breakout star who was able to go on and do all these other things. And then when they came back to the show, it was just like, this isn't the same person that we that we met. And of course, I mean, naturally, as I get older, I'm going to change, I'm going to evolve. But I never wanted the people who were technically there with me day one and people like you and Kevon and the rest of the production people to feel like, oh, we don't put him on now and now he's gone. You know, I always wanted yeah. to share what I feel like I've gotten because of the groundwork that was done by you guys in the early part of my career. And then plus like when, before I got into the web reality world, there was really no one in my personal opinion who was standing on as we say now, business. Everybody was worried about being somebody's friend. Everybody was worried about fighting. There was really nobody out there that I saw personally that was in the real life world, like doing things. Like I could go to this and click on the channel and see them. Like this is what they do. And yeah. I just felt like it was important for me to stay so that people could see the journey. Like when y'all first met me, I was fucking, I need this assistant. You know, that was like my first thing. And now I'm um, my own you, and, you, doing my you, own um, thing. And we got this, and we, I'm sorry. And we got the scene with you and Funky season three too. So, I mean, you know, we, we see it. Like we see it. It's not something you just, you know, just talk about, but we you actually bring that to the platform. Yeah. And I just I didn't want to, I just didn't want to be getting all these different things. And then like people be like, oh, he changed up on us. And then the last thing too, there's only been one girl who successfully has gotten this group together multiple times, and that is me. So if I left, who's gonna who's gonna be in charge of the girls? You know, like everybody tries to everybody tries to be the savior, but can't nobody do it like you know. Can't nobody really snap their fingers and say, can y'all stop? Let's go ahead and do this. Show me. Show me. And I'll give you $100 right now. But, 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 you, uh, but you also said in your green screens, you're tired of seeing this same old movie. So if you're in charge of the girls, are you directing the movie? Oh, no. This year, I definitely gave up my reins. I said anybody could take it. Anybody can have it. Y'all can fucking have it. I'm over it. All right, now. Y'all can right. have it. And we All see right. what happened. When I got out the driver's seat, we see what the fuck happened. 
<laughs> it's all Jamar Literally. Far. It's his messy ass. What you say? Yeah. Wait, tell him, tell him, because I said all the time. Jamar's a messy bitch. bitch. Tell him. Wait, why am I in it? Because bitch, you 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 gonna stay in it? Cause you in it. You see how you throwing in the stuff, and you did. I don't even do nothing. No, you did it all. I didn't do it. That was you. I was just behind the camera. Uh -huh. Jamar, I want to know, having been wa having watched this show, um, and now having worked on this show, what's what's your opinion about me? I'm curious. I've never asked you this. I'm putting you on front street. Because you've seen what the people have said. You've watched me on the show, but then you've actually worked on it. Oh, and Daria, I also want to tell you, I feel like not bringing back Ike for season six is was blasphemous. He well, moved. I, I understand that, but I'm just saying. Well, even know. though, even though I did secretly cast this whole season, I mean, we just gonna say it. You know, we just gonna say it. Did you? Did you? We just gonna say it, Jamal. But go ahead and answer the question. <laughs> Let me turn this screen. Hold on, I, I, I wish you could see my face right now. I really wish you could see my face. <laughs> So your question is, what do I think of Oliver Twist working with him and watching him? Oh, uh, <laughs> you are a fucking mess. You are a fucking mess. I am, it is never a dull moment in which I'm motherfucking ass. I'll say that. It's definitely never a dull moment. I, but I, I, I do love you, though. I think we've, we've definitely grown to uh, create a relationship. And uh, I'm glad to see, you know, the, the plane that you've been able to achieve. And I think as another black queer person, I'm proud to see, you know, your accomplishments. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think, is there, any, is there anything else I need to talk about? I am doing a, um, I am doing my weekly live recap tomorrow night at 11. Um, okay. So I will be talking about this episode. Oh, I will be talking about this episode. Can you um, give us um can you give us some exclusives of chasing the bee or what we know? I mean um what we don't know, like what what are you doing this um differently this time around? Um what I'm doing this differently this time around. Well, of course, I opened it up to the rest of the franchise to have other people come. Um it was always my intent to have like a, a chasing the beat for each city. And we've actually, I talked to each producer, but, you know, it never had materialized. But, you know, we're going to try to do that different in the future because we do want to make Chasing the Beat a thing. Um, which, I mean, it is a thing. We just want to make it more consistent and more regular with, with each city. Um, so opening up to each city, we are opening up to the public, um, which I got to try answer those emails. But we are opening up to the public. So, like, for anybody that's interested in showcasing their talent, like many of us have had the opportunity by being cast members on this channel, showcasing our talent. I'm trying to give another person the opportunity to showcase their talent so people can see them. Um, so email me at oliver.twix at mychasingreality.com. Yes, at mychasingreality.com. Um, yeah, and everybody has their own set this time. Like the last time before, everybody kind of had the same set. This time, everybody has different sets because, of course, everybody shot in different places, which I think is actually really cool. Yes, 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 yes. And Kendra will be in it. <laughs> Kendra will be in it. Yes. The promo song um that you guys hear is a song her and I recorded back during our time on season three. Um, that's actually going on my mixtape that I'm putting out later this year. Now I need to yeah. stop saying my mixtape, it's my EP. It's not my mixtape, my EP. Yes, 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 yes. This episode was very busy. It was a lot. Um, it was a I lot. Guess. There's some things I'm really glad you kept. Oh, okay. I'm I'm actually glad you kept everything. I mean, girl, I mean... <laughs> I mean, when the people make it so easy for me, why not? You know, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> when the people make it so easy, you gotta face time for these hate crimes. And you're gonna have I will, to... I will say... You're gonna, probably you're gonna, have, to, you're gonna have to prove, you know? I you're will say... I will say from episode 10 down, I was on stitches editing that episode. Which, no, you know, no. and you and I've had our private conversations mm -hmm. and I've never been one of those girls who've been like, and Dario, take this out. Don't do that. Have I? None, in none of my years on the show, I've never 
hounded you about how you've edited me because girl all i care about is did you show my business you know can the people see the link to click at the end of the day this bullshit they'll forget about but there's other yeah. stuff you know we can focus on um yeah. And I do appreciate, I do want to recognize you guys, um, specifically you and Dario, just because I've dealt with you more throughout this whole time, especially this season, on just like the sensitivity that you've given um, during this whole situation and, you know, the the things that we've discussed. I greatly appreciate it, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do you regret not letting me leave? Um, not the first time. I mean, this. I think I didn't. I don't even think we talked the second time when you tried to leave. But the first time, no, because I mean, we didn't even get to do anything, and I wanted to at least like you know. Have How long was I at that scene before I got up? It's all right, y'all. I'm gonna you know, go. You probably, I think it had to be like less than ten minutes. <laughs> probably less than five. I've never left the scene. That was the first time. Have I? Have I ever left the scene? I don't, I can't think of, I can't think of time I'm like, all right, I'm finna go. Oh, that's too much to think about. <laughs> it's been so many scenes. It's been too many scenes. <laughs> it's been but, too many. Is that how you feel? I mean, well, you about to get your break, bitch, okay? No, I'm, about, I'm about to get my break from you, yes, and everybody else. <laughs> I mean, you'll never get your break from me. Don't say that. Okay. I have a whole new number. <laughs> I mean, girl, I know how to get in contact with you. I'm not worried about it. Okay. I'm hollering. I don't know why he, I don't know why he's trying to act like this right now, but I get it. <laughs> I mean, Grace the end of the season now. These hoes is fire. They let go of their contract. Can we just stop with the charade? Well, Oliver, since you're up here, I do want to say um just shout out to you. Because <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna switch the gears because that's what you said. But um, we're gonna switch the gears. I just wanna say shout out to you. Um I feel like out of um, all the cast members that have been a part of Chasing um, Atlanta, you have definitely went above and beyond and actually helped me out on my brand, um, bringing on Chasing the Beat, you know, when it comes down to these scenes, helping, you know, put, you know, the cast together, especially when there's a lot of drama going on or nobody really wants to, you know, talk to each other, you know, building that. So I do um, want to shout that, um, give you your um, flowers for that. Um, yeah. And I well, think you're I'm, just a person. I mean, remember season three? I mean, you were just so humble. Like, you were just like, girl, what are we doing? What do we do? And then now you became this, I guess, the head nerd in charge. <laughs> Napping all these hoes away, like, get back, get back. I mean, shit. I just think it's so crazy. And now, and now you're going to give them hydraulics. And all these other things. I mean, it's, it's so much. It's honestly so much I could really say. I mean, just shout out to you. Just, I mean, from Aquarius to Aquarius. I mean, you get it. Curtis is business, child. Yeah, I do. I want to give you your flowers. And then I want to give advice to the rest of the people who will come after us, um, whether it be on Chasing Reality or any other web reality um, show. Um, I will say I will say this because it's a little shady. Um, you know, I've I've sat back and I see all. I just want to say that I see all, and I hope everyone is ready to give an account. You know, mm. I've seen all. <laughs> I've seen mm. everything. I've heard everything, and I just hope everyone's ready to give an account. Are you ready? Because I am. Okay, that's that. Take it mm. how you want. Okay, the second thing is. And Dario, you know, we've connected since, I won't say since day one, because I, I always saw Kevon more than I saw you, but it was it was after that scene, girl, in season yeah, that, three. That's what at, she was trying to say me on up here earlier. What you say? Nothing. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, say it. What you got to say? No, I was, no. Go ahead. Shout out to Kevon, because Kevon was a producer when I came on, too, and Kevon used to be the one that I would see, of course, like, the most up until that up until that season three uh, gift wrapping party that we all went to. And after that, you, you and me and Dari, we just always saw eye to eye. And I just want to, the reason why I always wanted to give my best to you is because, you know, just outside of us developing a friendship and a work relationship, you're another young queer person of color out here 
in this Thank space, you. trying to create something that the people say you can't do, you would never do. And I know the struggles it is um, growing up gay, growing up black, growing up queer, wanting to do all these creative things, going to school for bullshit, but really wanted to do all these other things. And um, I just wanted to give what you were giving me. You know what I'm saying? Like, as much as you say, I've helped you in this show, like, you've helped me out, girl. And you've been a friend to me throughout this whole time. I will say that, mm -hmm. you know? Somebody asked me, like, do I feel like I walk away with any friends? I was like, girl, me and Dario, you know, that's the friendship y'all that nobody really know about. Me and this hoe go at it, you know? Me and this hoe, me and this hoe go, what now? Don't say all the time. Don't say that. We usually have, we usually have one clarifying chat a year. Y'all, I had to roll up on this hoe in the club. I said, bitch, now listen, I'm not these other girls. Don't do me like that, bitch. You need to stop this fucking shit. But, We've always had a mutual respect. Like these are things that people have don't know about you and I, unless you don't ran your mouth, bitch. But I ain't never tell nobody. But <laughs> and Dario's like my brother, and I just really love you. And I've and it's been a joy working with you and supporting you and working on this brand. It really has. And I'm really sad that it's done. Um, the next thing I want to say, the last thing before I get out of here, is like to anybody that wants to do what we've done, if you're gonna be on a future show, Chase in Orlando whatever, chasing New York, chasing, come on this show and be about your business. Be about what you are wanting to build. The bullshit, the drama is going to come naturally. The people mm -hmm. going to forget about the shit in two, three days. Don't get caught up in these comments. Don't get caught up in what the cast is saying. Well, Don't hold on, hold on, because you, cause you said two, three days, but it's been about eight now that it's midnight o'clock. Um, the people want to know why you call me a... <laughs> The people want to know why you call me a weak fat bitch. <laughs> I don't remember saying that. And even though me and Kane were cool, I always knew Doomsday would come. L let me tell you something. I always prepare for Doomsday in every situation. No one's ever going to have me just looking crazy. No one. Mm -hmm. And Mama Twix, her Taurus FBI skills taught me that at a, at a very young age. No one can ever get me. You just won't be able to. Because I always have a plan for every situation. I do. One thing Berlin and them said is that she's very calculated. Yeah, I am, because you'll just never get me. You, you can't, you won't. So even in the most comfortable situations, I know exactly what I'm saying, and I know what I'm not saying, because I've seen what other people have done to other people, and you'll just never do that. So the day when I say this did not happen, I can confidently look at you, you and anybody in the eyes and say this did not happen. I would never talk about and Dario to anybody else in this cast on the show that everybody's gunning for me for. Why would I set myself up like that? That is stupid. Anyways, um, I, mean, I know we already talked about it, but I mean, well, there you have it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, anybody that's coming on this show, be about your business, be about your craft, share the world your story, share the world your personality. Fuck these hoes that you just met on a call sheet. Fuck them. We hope for the best. Try your best. Give your best. But fuck them. Because you'll be like a lot of people we've seen season after season get caught up in the friendships. It ain't made one business transaction yet, but a whole season. They haven't converted all of these hundreds of thousands of people watching us week after week into followers of their own content to where they can branch out and do their own thing. You'll get caught up and left behind. Like Lauren said, don't be like them. You remember when Lauren did that, bitch? We fell out. <laughs> don't be like them. Come on here and really be about your business. Where your energy goes is where the blessings will flow, where everything else will go. If you focus on bullshit, focus on hoes, that's where everything gonna go. But if you focus on your craft, focus on your music, that's 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 what's gonna get what it needs. Yes. Don't be mean to production. If if the edit come out wrong, fuck it. Get you get you a, a YouTube channel, go live, and just talk talk your own stuff in front of the people. They'll come. Fuck it. You know, have the attitude of fuck it. If it don't make you money, who gives a good goddamn? Honestly. Because this season is over. Season six is done in the can. All this shit that was said, don't nobody give a fuck. They gonna forget. But the people that stream, that. streaming a lot of years later. ZAP is still zapping these hoes away. <laughs> oh. I mean... <laughs> Don't chase the drama. Who gives a good god fucking damn? Who gives a damn? Mm -hmm.
who don't get so in 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 and if you're gonna tap into the drama, at least make some money from it. If a mm -hmm. boy pull a taser out on you, say DAP, put it on the song and make a whole mixtape about it. Sell some seasoning, sell your t-shirts, get down in the comments, respond to the people, go live, get some good looking pictures, get you, get you a nice business email. Monetize your platforms, make your money, become the star that everybody say they want to be. Become it, do it, do the work. Everybody, do the work. Please do the work. Do the work. I love y'all. I love you guys so much. We love you. And um, um, well, I'm going. I'm going to bring up some more people, honey. So thank you so much, Oliver Twix. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Jamar, I love you. Jamar, thank you so much for everything that you did this season. And thank you for supporting Andario. When all them people left him and people was quitting on him. No, I'm going to say it. I'm going to fucking say it. I'll be tired of you holding your tongue. I'll be tired of that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is no hate to nobody. And this is no hate, honestly, no hate to nobody. It, it is not. And I miss a lot of people that used to be here, but I'm just going to be real. We in the, we at the end. Fuck holding our tongue. Shit. Fuck it. Go for it. Go for it. When all these people left him high and dry, and <laughs> left, and and Dario and Dario pays for a lot of stuff out of his pocket. You know, the reason why we ain't had no cash trip because the people couldn't pay. It wasn't because we canceled it. Just because it got canceled. Okay. Jamar, we thank you for I thank you for supporting him and sticking by him. When everybody else didn't. I really do appreciate that. No, I really, really do. Because we started out with a, a team of four, five, six, and then it just got down to two, which everybody would respect their decisions. But I appreciate you for staying to the very end. And God is going to bless you accordingly for that. Am I being messy? I'm really being honest. I don't know what the hell y'all I, mean, I, I appreciate it. Cause I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to be here, honestly. You know, I, I it's an honor for me. So that's my girl, and I'm going to support her. Yes. I don't know what the hell y'all falling out for. Y'all know this my mouth. I've actually calmed down a whole lot. I... <laughs> <laughs> I will talk to you soon. I will talk to you. I will see you tomorrow. Oh, yes, for the filming. Exactly. All right. See you tomorrow. Mine. Mine. <laughs> Shout out to Oliver. <laughs> All right, next coming to the stage, we have another special guest. Um, this person has been on Chasing Atlanta from season five and six. He has been in the green screen, <laughs> cutting the F up. I've said it earlier that, you know, he was one of my favorite people in the green screens. So let's give it up to Rico Cassidon. What's up, everybody? Hi, hey, Rico. What's going on? Every hey, over here half sleep trying to stay awake with y'all. Hi. Good morning, because I'm I'm tired as hell now. <laughs> but good morning. <laughs> Bitch, I've been trying. Good morning. Hi, everybody. I just want to say this one last time. I hope everybody has their notebooks out. I hope everybody was taking their notes. So sorry that we couldn't use them at at a event. So I'm glad y'all kept y'all notes this season. Mm -hmm. I blame me. I blame me. Blame me. <laughs> but no, I make sure you stream it at the, I, at the end. I just want to come up here and say, um, my journey with y'all that season four when I first started doing everything I was doing. I remember coming to the audition with my little faux dreads in my head and my little black outfit on, thinking, nervous as all daylight. And I just was not the person that y'all met season five. And it took, I told myself leaving that, that audition that I was going to make sure if I was ever allowed the opportunity to come back, I would have everything it took to be considered chasing Atlanta. And I walked in that season five and be like, hey, what's going on? Hey, mama, how y'all doing? I'm here. Don't mind me. I'm loud. I'm just being, I'm just here. This is how we going to do this. What y'all want? What y'all want me to say? Okay. You did. You did. Rico was born from there. Like, 
that moment I just was like, I am myself and I can be myself. And I've given chasing in the last two years me. Like good, bad, ugly, justice for hairlines. Um <laughs> I people with the Ozempic, clip on teeth. I just I mean, I gave me in my silliness, my craziness, my anger. I gave all of me. Every moment was authentic. And I thank you and Dario for giving me the opportunity for this moment because you have this platform and you have monumentous helped me in ways that, you know, can't be said. And and Dario, no, the first time I hit a milestone, I'll text and Dario and say, bitch, I reached 10K. Uh, bitch, my song got over 7,000 streams in one day. Like, I send and that's it. what I like to hear. That's and I what I like to hear. Every time I hit a milestone, I hit, I send it to Andario because without Andario, it wouldn't have happened. I was doing good on my own, but this platform really gave me the opportunity to show my work. And once I learned how to use the platform for what it needed to be used for, it's been amazing. This year has, like I said in my confessionals, has been one of the most hardest but blessed years of my life because... Yeah. Personally, everything with the shits, but business wise, everything has been booming and I've been learning and growing as a human being. This show has, has taught me how to grow up real quick. It, it helped me learn how to deal with things and, and focus on things and pinpoint things that I thought I was good with in my life. But it helped me work on myself personally. And I thank you for that. And I thank this platform because I've been introduced to a bunch of great people. Um, I've been afforded opportunities that I never thought I could, I would be allowed. And I've been able to showcase my talent far and, far and wide, wider than I could have done by myself. And I thank y'all for that. We thank you, Rico, for coming on board and doing exactly what you wanted to do, especially showcasing your music and everything. Like I told you before, a bad bitch song is the tea. <laughs> oh, Lord, oh, the tea. And I blame me is the tea. <laughs> so I'm I mean, just shout out to you. Um, I do remember you um um uh, um auditioning for season four. And I think at that time it was just I, I just didn't see that you were ready to be a part. But yeah. season five, when you came in. And even then, season five, you were giving me your all. But season six, I felt like you probably either came out your comfort zone, maybe, or you just felt more like in it. Like, okay, I know what, you know, Chasing wants me to do. I know what the producers want me to do. But this time, I really want to just come in here, be funny, be entertaining. And that's what sells. And people yeah. like you for just your personality. And then on top of that, your music is already the tea. That's going to keep climbing up. And that's what this platform is designed for. It's so many people that watch y'all. This is how you're able to make your benefits from it. So kudos to you. And I'm learning it. And I, I, I shout out, shout out to Oliver, shout out to Tonka, shout out to the people who actually took me under their wing during these these two years and actually said, okay, bitch, okay, that's cute that you're trying to be all that. But remember, this is about coins. Not about them people in the comedy. You trying to get the money. You not trying to trying to entertain and be the the head. You you want to get be able to take this and make some money off of it. And yes. like Oliver said to the people coming after, like I I'm never leaving Chase now. I'm just, Dario stuck with me. I don't care what Dario's gonna do. But <laughs> Dario is stuck with me, bitch. I don't know what he gonna use me for, bitch. I will pop up in Orlando like, hey, how y'all doing, bitch? But <laughs> With me. I don't care. But for the people coming after, I just this mentally can take a toll on you. So just make sure that when you when you do this, you have to understand what you're putting yourself through. Yeah. And understand that you have to understand that this is a business. At the end of the day, you as a business. You can definitely get, get lost in this in this platform on this on this film you can it, it, it's a lot it mentally can take a toll on you but just always keep in mind like oliver says your goal your, your music your work your art never lose focus of that because if you lose focus of that you'll lose focus of yourself and i'm just thankful to be able to make this platform because a lot of people 
would die to be in a position that I I was get I was being able to be in. And Absolutely. I think Absolutely. Well, you hear Rico, and you know I've had this time I've had a conversation with you. I don't want to talk about it here, but you know, I had a private conversation with you. Um, and I've told you, you know, my response a couple of days ago. Let me just focus on what I gotta focus on. But I'm serious. I mean, like you have a gift, and I want more, I want people to continue to see that. So just continue to do you. Um, continue to, you know, reach out to the people for that situation, and then we'll move forward and do what we gotta do for that. So kudos when, to you, Rico. Whenever y'all need me, I'm always here. And if your green screen needs to be livened up, call your girl because I'm here for it. Okay. All right. Bye, All right, Rico. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bring up some more cast members. It looks like we got a few more cast members that popped up in the chat. So um I'm gonna drop you down and then I'm gonna bring up a few more, okay? All right, bye y'all. Bye, Rico. How you feeling, Jamar? I feel amazing. How about yourself? I'm feeling great. We going still? Cause I, I mean, I still gotta get to my tea, but I'm I'm waiting. This I'm just here waiting. Okay, so we gonna, <laughs> we, we gonna rush. We gonna rush shit. We gonna rush shit. Coming to the stage, we also have. It looks like her name says Pineapple Bottom, so we should already know what that is. Who that is? Seven, also known as Drew Friday, when she's on the stage. Hey, Seven. Hi, Adele. Hey. <laughs> hey, boom. Hi, Titi. Titi, this mug is stunning, girl. I gotta let him know. It's like, bitch, I need my way around a makeup brush, bitch. Girl, you dug into this makeup, girl. You dug into this makeup, girl. So and Gail, girl, I ain't seen you in a month of some Sundays, and I'm having withdrawals. Really? Yes. I really um, am, girl. Oh, okay. Probably, you know, shit. <laughs> I just wanted to come here and say thank you. Oh. Like, I really just wanted to say thank you. Like, like you know how I feel about you. Like, you know how I feel about you. I ride for my Aquarius. And I'm just so appreciative the best to ever do of, it. of you just putting me on and uh, constantly pouring into me. Um, TT, I appreciate you for dealing with my motherfucking attitude and uh, my motherfucking mouth because I'm always cussing you out. Like, I'm giving you the gift of parenthood, so that will be eternal. You know, I just really do appreciate y'all. Like, it's people that know my name and know me because of this show. And like, Period. I don't think people realize how long I've been doing drag. Like I've only, like when the, when I started two years ago, I had only, I had just started doing drag. Like when I joined the cast two years ago, I just started doing drag. I think I was doing drag for what, dark, two and a half, three years then. Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. for me to walk into the room and you instantly, I remember you saying you instantly just was like, yep. Yep. It, yeah. I, and I appreciate it. Yeah. I, I, you know, you know how I feel about you. Like, I'm sad that you know that this chapter is closing. However, I am very excited for all of the new chapters that we will embark on and yes. all of the new that we will make together. Yes. Period. Period. And shout out to you, Seven. Um, because I know last season it was probably you know a little awkward for you. You were probably nervous here and there, and then also dealing with you know the reception of the people through the comments and stuff like that. But shout out to you for being able to, you know, overcome that, come back next season, season six, and being able to flourish, being able to become truly yourself. So shout out to you. I feel like this season I was, I was a lot, I was, I was for myself a lot. Like, I feel like I opened up more than I did my first season. Like my first season, I can tell I was very, very depressed. Mm -hmm. Like looking back at it, I can tell I was very, very depressed, especially like my first confessional. Like that's when everything had really just started crumbling. So like looking yeah, at myself no. from season five to season six, I'm like, damn girl, you did grow a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you were going through a lot of stuff season five as well. And I want people to know that like you were going through a lot. But I feel like this season, you overcome all of that. Um, I know the comments was still 
a lot and I'm still trying to manage those. But at the same time, I still feel like you have this fuck what they got to say. This is truly me. And I'm working on me mentality. So, yeah. It gave every day. It gave very, very much day. that. And I'm glad. And I'm glad that you were able to show more. I'm glad that you were able to show more. Um, especially with your housewarming, um, that scene alone, I just felt like that scene alone was everything. I mean, you were able to speak in front of your family and friends that always had your back, always supported you, but you were able to tell them like, I want to be like the women in my life. Like that was everything. And then having that conversation with your mom, I know like it was probably, you know, kind of, you know, you know how she was taking it and a few things that I left out and a few things I kept in, you know how she was taking it. But um, I'm just glad that you were able to have those conversations on camera because you never know. There's probably another seven out there that you're probably helping. I mean, especially from season five, seven. I mean, look at season five, seven. They probably feel like that. And now watching you season six, this is what they feel like they can also look at it for themselves in the future. So shout out to you for being able to influence other people. I've realized that, yeah. like, okay, so it's really weird. Cause, girl, you know I'm on the apps, girl. And <laughs> I get on the app and uh, somebody will say, oh my gosh, I watch you on Chasing. And I'm like, well, damn. And then, mm -hmm. like, well, no, 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 like, real talk, like, thank you for telling your truth and walking in your, like, walking in your light. Um, like, I'm just looking at you and seeing how far you've come in a year and a half. And yes. it's really hope, and I'm like, oh, that's that's dope, that's dope. Yes. I really yes. Like, yes. I really do, I really do. But you know, I won't yeah. be this long. You know, you know me, Dario. I'm, I'm a, I'm a quickie. I'm an in and outer. Where you going? Are you headed home? I just because of you, I'm booked, busy, and blessed. So yes. Yes, I'm just leaving again. Period. I was Period. watching everything from backstage. I was watching everything for backstage with my <laughs> airpod in my ear, sitting backstage waiting for the show to start. I was I was last, and I'm like, y'all, as long as y'all want to stall this show, that's fine by me because I'm gonna sit right here. I'm screaming. <laughs> we appreciate it. We appreciate so I'm it. I'm on my way home. Well, you get home safe, honey. Put you on some music, and okay, you be safe. I'll out see y'all. I'll see, see y'all sometime. All right, I will. I'm you not going to my home. house. Um, I'll text you later. All right, bye. All right. Um. Okay, so we got. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um. Let sorry. the people do. Let the people have their moments. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had a pop. I just saw a pop. It's the wine. Okay. I know what y'all. I know what y'all waiting for, and I'm. I'm finna give it to y'all. Just give me a second. Give me a second. Um. Okay. So now I want to bring up who was also funny as hell in green screens. Um. This person also gave a lot. Um. It rhymes with we were bucking season five. <laughs> Can we just? I need him to re replicate that exact moment for me when he come up here. Go ahead. Okay, well, you know what, F it. We know who it is. It's Jay Amore. We're going to bring Jay Amore to the stage. You we need you to go ahead one. and... Huh? You tried, you tried that one. Now we were bucking. You tried it. You tried it. <laughs> you tried it. You tried Say it, it again for us just for the one time. Still not on season seven. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're not. bullshit. Mm -mm. No, I'm not. We were fucking. Oh my god, y'all is a mess. Yo, how do y'all feel? It's officially over. I'm gonna go to Barbados. <laughs> no, but it's okay. I ain't gonna lie. This was so bittersweet. But I do want to say thank y'all. Like y'all have really, because Dario, I don't know. When we finished uh, season five reunion, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm coming back. He was like, No, you're gonna come back. And we talked this season, was like, no, I'm just, I want you to, to be personal. I want you to tell your part. I said, all right, I do not tell my personal life. My personal life is mm -hmm. oh. myself. And you had me out there and I got, oh. you had me out there and I did, I did it. I was, I was like, okay, cool. I followed you. I followed your advice. I listened. 
I feel like this was a great season for me. I want to thank y'all so much. Y'all have opened up so many doors. So many people I want to strangle, but y'all have opened up so many doors for me. And I just want to say thank you for everything that y'all have done. Jay, you're amazing. We just want to thank you for being a part of the platform. I mean, I feel like you just got, I don't know if it's just you, I, I don't know if it's just because it's late or what, but I, I don't know. I feel like you got something to say. Um, a little bit. I don't have nothing to say. I'm being very good. I'm not gonna say nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, one thing I do want to say, like I said earlier, Jay, your green screens is everything. Um, my favorite scene from you was season five when you did your final um fashion show for that season. Um, everything. Um, you're a Libra. I mean, you're an air sign, so I mean, clearly you're going to showcase that work. Period, and that's all that matters. Um, especially with the wine, which I also need some. And I, I um, have some freshly bottled for you, and and I gotta give you a bottle to get your mom. Period. Um, and then, um, but again, you came on this show, even though you had a lot of obstacles with the drama and everything, and it kind of oversaturated a few things that you brought. You still came out on top, in my opinion. Um, you still was able to showcase everything that you wanted to showcase. I feel like. Um, shout out to you, Jay. Mm, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I just yeah. wanted to come and say thank you for everything. I cannot believe it's officially over. Yeah. Lord Jesus, I'm so glad I only yeah. did two seasons because you would have cast me on season two when I first auditioned, but you would have been a hot mess. <laughs> it would have been entertaining though. No, so so Jay, so fun fact for everybody, Jay um auditioned season two. And she was so quiet. She was so quiet, baby. But I mean, it was it was our second season, second season too. So we were still learning how to, you know, do things and this stuff now. But um, when you were um, when you came on your second season, well, you um, auditioned your second season. Excuse me. When you auditioned for season two, I just didn't think at that time that was the best time for you. But oh, when it you wasn't. <laughs> right. So when you auditioned season five, it was like I remember you. And you came, remember what you came with? Because I think I, I, came think in, I came in them booty shorts. Everybody, every person on that panel had a glass, had a bottle of wine to take home. Baby, that, that book, that book. <laughs> yeah, y'all did. I, I, I gave it. So listen, if y'all auditioned for Orlando, I need y'all to bring it. Don't don't come half ass. So y'all better bring it for Orlando. Oh, baby, listen, we're re, we we we're restructuring. We're restructuring. <laughs> baby, we're restructuring. We are rebuilding. We are making the foundation. Period. Um, Chasing Orlando is going to be the tea um, once we fully get it all together and ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to stay on for this announcement, but I may office the hallway don't cut that much longer for this announcement to drop. Oh, I'm, I'm about to um, I'm about to start because, girl, it's, it's three hours and it's one o'clock in the morning. I still got content to put out that I might have to wait till the morning because I'm tired. Uh-oh. Hello. I might talk. We'll go, go and drop that. All right, Jay. All right, bye, y'all. Bye. bye. Jamar? Hmm? You good? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. You just had went it, out. Stream yard, stream yard doing stream yard things. All right, I'm going to take these two lives here, and then we'll get started. Sugar, hey, Sugar, how you doing? Hey. Right, I'm going to take these two lives hey, here, please. and then we'll get started. Sugar, hey, Sugar, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Okay, you took me on first. And Dario, um, I want to say I'm in the presence, Jamar, of, of royalty. You guys are royalty. And so I want to give you guys your praise. Um, I hope you can hear me. Can you guys hear me? I yeah. Hear you. Okay, perfect. So, you know, I know how to act in, in the presence of royalty. What, what I came to say is um, I thank you for, you know, everything that you guys had brought it really changed my life and I promote your page on my new page that I came up with and I tell I be like y'all need to watch chasing so let me get to what I want to talk about the people that you cast it because I had that question I feel like with the fashions with the music Oliver I love you uh, Rico Casadon, I love you. The people that came forth and the things that they had to offer, Troy, I love you, hosting. They brought something as far as what they're chasing and me in the LGBT girl, I can't, so I can't do nothing. And you so fine, Andorra, ooh, and you beat, baby. <laughs> Honey, 
be down for the God. You look so good. Oh my God, you look so good. And it's like, and this is my natural me. Sorry, you guys, I clapped very well. But going back to it, me saying that is because you casted people that came with something that didn't come boring. Um, Tony, I love you. I want to say that you casted people that brought something that shined light on the LGBTQ community in terms of the fashion designers, rappers, yeah. R and B artists, people that could do um singing, promoting, writing. Up. We even got the dog. I love Dominique Dog Groom. I got a dog. Look, he biting on my leg right now, playing with my baby. You brought a dog room. It's like when I said that it was like because the cast was very powerful. Now I want to touch on something. I never expected Oliver to get into a fight. I love the head nerd in charge. I'm telling you, I'm trying to be on the um cruise that he's doing and the stuff that he's hosting. I never expected that. It was very something different. And I want to say that these episodes had more emotion. And as far as also, I'm going to be quick and I'm out of here. Tawan, you offering support as far as a counselor, someone to talk to and things like that is needed as someone that has put together a cast. You all, I don't want to, you know, I don't know what go on the back. I don't want to not stop, can't credit anyone, but you know how y'all did that it was needed someone to talk to someone to address the issues it was it was a lot of emotions poured into it and i thank you guys for that also i want to say i never was here to tear anyone up because i said a lot of stuff when i came on live but it was based on what i seen that was brought and i'm not going to say nothing bad about king kane but i want to say this i like the way that how things transpired for king kane in terms of what we seen after all the mess it was like we got mess and then we got to see what you had to offer in terms of your intelligence business and things like that a relationship yeah. is a relationship and people can be in a relationship how they want to be in it and so um I never was trying to drag him ever. And I love the whole cast and I thank them and appreciate them for what they had to offer to us as the LGBT community that's watching. We're watching. I need y'all to know that we're watching all over the world and you're impacting us all over the world. This is not something small. Again, I repeat, Jamar uh, and Dario, you're royalty. And if they don't respect that, they don't know who you is, baby. It's royalty in here. But I'm going to step out and I thank you for allowing me to come on and say that. Usually I come on talking shit. I've been drinking, but it, it I, royalty. Have, I'm not going to talk this time, But you having a good time. I do want to say this, Sugar, before you go. Shout out to you for every week being, I know, I think you just missed one. But a shout out to you every week coming to the after show taking your notes, like, you know, dissecting what you're seeing in the episodes and then talking to the cast at the, you know, that does the after shows and, you know, giving your reviews. I mean, shout out to you. Cause I mean, ain't nobody Thank else you. doing it better than you. So Thank period. you. Hey, period. I was hoping to get picked up. You know, I got my own channel. I was like, shit. Anyway, I watched this and I support everything chasing. And I went and looked at my budget. I was like, shit, I need to subscribe to something where it, you know, provides money to the situation. Because if you're really going to support it, you're going to support it 100%. And I support it 100%. And I can dedicate whatever small amount of money that I make. I'm in customer service, whatever. I support y'all. Like I said, Orlando on the way. Hey, I'm going to be on that shit. They got the after show. My ass going to be there. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be there. And thank you for, you know, even bringing me on and let me say my piece. But I just wanted to make sure I clear the air too that I never wanted to attack anyone. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. thank everybody for opening their lives up to let other people it's people in the same situations that they are that's not living their life publicly and yeah. and this platform is allowing the lgbtq community to really live their life publicly you guys yeah. are doing it you, you you're doing it hands down thank you jamar for sticking there making sure that this was possible and and everything 
that's that's beautiful, y'all. But you know, I'm drinking. Oh, I ain't Thank you so much, sugar. Continue to watch the live. As you know, I don't know how. Long oh, I'm here. The but TV in the so living much. room. My phone. She said my phone and it just cut off. All right now. All right. Well, thank you so much, sugar. All right. I'm going to take Neil and then I'm going to move on. How you doing? Oop. Yeah, you muted. Hola. You're, You're muted. muted. You're muted. I, we can't hear you. Can you take him off of mute? You're muted. Press the um unmute button. I can't do it for you. Unmute, unmute yourself. You're oh, sure. on mute. I was on mute. There you go. Oh, the whole time I was on mute. I'm sorry. Is that Rico? Yes. Yeah. Oh, hey. Yeah. Is that Rico? No, you, so you don't met her. Okay. Um, we live in the same so city. I, I just want to say, just like what she has said as well, too. Hey, Jamar, by the way. Love you too. Um, and Dario, you did an amazing ass job. Thank you, you did an amazing job. And don't let nobody take that shit away from you ever again. Don't do not do that. Um, for me, I've been watching since season one as well too. And I seen like from the production that went from season one to how you're doing right now, bro. You did that shit. And it's, 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 for the LGBTQIA, whatever, I want to say, like, we, we, you did that. You did that for all of us. And I, I love that for you as well, too, bro. Also, relax shit. Um, I just want to give a shout out to you. I want to give a shout out to you because, like, how much that you have uh, put into your work and how much you are and who you are as well, too. I want to give a huge shout out as well, too, to all the cast members. Um, I'm not gonna go down the list because I got I got a face, but at the end of the day, I'm not gonna go down that list. Uh, um, everyone has came uh, into on, onto film and they show who they were, and they they presented themselves. Um, and there's little black boys, little black girls, little black trans women, little black trans boys as well too. That are looking at a lot of. Uh, uh, people that have been on the show and they're saying like, this is who I want to be. And I just want to commit every single one of uh, everyone who has been on the show. And I love y'all. Um, I also want to give a huge shout out to, of course, TCB as well too, for allowing to bringing a lot of- uh, Fuck TCB. That's- <laughs> you got to play here. I want to bring. That's my food. Damn, I'm having a. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm having. Okay, a, I want to bring. Uh, oh, I also want to say, shout out to TCB as well too for allowing for, um, those people uh, on the show to be able to express themselves as well too, and we're not. But um, I love y'all, yo, and y'all cool as fuck. And Dario, keep doing your thing, yo. You're twenty eight. And you're young, yeah. and you have so much ahead of you. Thank and you. I cannot wait to see what's uh, next for you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, right. Neil. Cornell. Peace and out, y'all. Love y'all. All right. Love love you too, I love everybody that love me. <laughs> I just <laughs> didn't I say it to you on the phone one time last week or something like that. Girl, can't say everybody. All right, it's been three hours. It's one o'clock in the morning. We're gonna wrap this up because I have a few things I do want to say. I do have a few things I want to address. Um, this is <sighs> I'm only gonna address a few things that I've heard, and I'm only going to address it in a professional manner. I'm also going to talk about um, a few comments or questions that a lot of the audience have had time at the time, at the time, at the time. Um, I have a list of notes already here. Um, and that's that. I'm not going to say any names. 
I'm just going to say individuals, groups, or whatever. It is what it is. It's no hard. She just left me off. Oh, uh, StreamYard. Hey, it's been doing it all night. Um, <laughs> do I need to put my do rag on for this? <laughs> Will it make you feel better, more comfortable? No, girl, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know, let me stop. Um, <laughs> All right. So um, first and foremost, I just want to say shout out to again, everybody again that was a part of this season. Um, last year was honestly a tough year for probably everyone. Um, based on everything that we have filmed, um, there was a lot of scenes where we have dig deep into mental health and stuff like that. Um, so everybody was pretty much all over the place for the most part trying to make this happen. Um, that's the first thing I do want to say. The second thing is, is that I've noticed that over time, I do not give myself a lot of credit. And the reason why is because this platform is designed to showcase the talent on. Oh, girl, I got to say Kyle. So we're going to make this quick. Um, I, I, some thank. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, you're going to make it. Mm -hmm. Make it. OK, so um, so um, I do want to address a few things. First and foremost, y'all have to understand I am still my own person at the end of the day. On top of that, I edit the entire, everything that you see on the franchise, all 400 plus videos on the franchise. The shit is starting to become overwhelming because I have a lot of other things going on. Um, so I want people to understand that. When it comes down to the episodes being late, I do apologize. However, you have to understand it's just me. Most productions have three, four, five editors, assistant editors, what you want to call it or whatever. If you pay attention to credits of your favorite um, Housewives and Love and Hip Hops, you will see there's more than one editor. It's just me. When it comes down to group ensemble cast um, filmings and stuff like that, it takes a very long time, which is why two of the episodes got pushed back a day later. On top of that, I have to work on... Um, you know, I have to work through cast schedulings and stuff like that. During the season, I had to film green screen. So I couldn't, ha I didn't have time to edit the episode that week. And so if it was delayed, it was just delayed. Period. <laughs> it's working. And then you're just dealing with technology. Technology doesn't always agree. It's um, I appreciate everybody waiting. But what bothers me is people complaining about how unprofessional it has been. I'm not understanding the whole unprofessional piece when I'm telling everybody that, hey, y'all, we're going to be 30 minutes late. We're going to be an hour late. We're going to be two hours late. We're going to be a day late. At least it's still coming out in the same week. So please work with me. That's all I'm asking. Um, we are all doing this pretty much at free will. So please understand that y'all are getting this entertainment at no cost to y'all. But please understand that we are still human beings. Understand that. Thank you. Um, there was another. Um, let me see here. Let me make sure. Did I tackle everything with that? Yes. On top of that, um, I was also dealing with my own mental situations um, since the season started. Um, I have. I'm going to go ahead and say it because it's practically public at this point. I have went through a breakup. I have started this brand new year in a new place, no man, completely single. But for the entire few months of editing the show, I had to deal with that and all of the headache and the hardship and the stress and all this other stuff. On top of that, other financial issues, on top of that, other personal issues, on top of that, family issues and stuff like that. I mean, at the end of the day, all of that stuff shouldn't matter because I still was supposed to put out a show, but at the same time, y'all have to understand I am a human. For the past five seasons of Chasing Atlanta, I was, for, for the most part, probably 95% on time. This season, just give me some slack. I apologize. But at the same time, y'all have to understand, I'm still a human. Um, Somebody also said before, why are green screens film late? Um, I wouldn't consider it late. Because typically, every season of Chasing Atlanta, 
we do wait until probably closer to the end of the season to start filming green screens. Typically, we start filming green screens after we release the first promo of the season. The reason why is because budget. We don't have a huge budget. We're not paying the cast. So we have to work with everything that we have. I mean, it's as simple as that. So when people say like, oh, they're not giving their true, you know, um, emotions off cameras and I mean, um, on the on the green screen and stuff like that. I mean, we tell them every time and we have it in emails and stuff like that, that you have to act like if you were there at that present moment, because you as a viewer are watching the show. You're seeing it like if it happened today, like if it happened last week, even though this stuff was filmed months ago. I think that's that with green screens. Um, why are things cut out of episodes? Cast members complaining about it. Um, audience members are also not getting the full story. Okay. So why are certain things cut out of episodes? Um, most of the time I cut things out of episodes because it's either repetitive or unnecessary. When I say unnecessary, it's likely not being brought up again in the future, um, or it's something that we're not focused on on their main storyline. I mean, on their main story um, storyline. Excuse me. Um, yeah. Any more? Questions? And it's fourteen people. It's fourteen and people. Each scene is at least thirty minutes. Each scene. Like we said in the beginning, um, we. <laughs> scenes probably 30 minutes to an hour if it's a group scene we probably be we probably film it from an hour to two hours and so when you watch it you're watching probably like 10 15 minutes or probably five minutes or probably three because honey i'm not going to sit through all of this footage which we adds 25 episodes <laughs> right which adds on my next topic when people say well you're doing favoritism how Baby, I be wanting to get this done so I can get this out to y'all. Baby, I ain't got time to show favoritism to nobody. Who? Um, no, I do not show favoritism. Um, however, I will say this. Um, certain things cast members happen to say by accident or by mistake. And it could be something detrimental to their business or something that can impact them, such as a situation outside of the cast it could be something you know like i almost killed your ex and then the ex finds out and then now i'm getting sued you're getting sued all this other stuff so of course i'm taking things out that's just a scenario child i'm just you know giving it <laughs> um, um yeah so it's also to protect the cast because at the same time yes we are giving y'all a show and and sometimes you know the cast may do things that you know they don't mean to do or say or whatever. So if they hit me up and, you know, it's something that, you know, is not really impacting the show or the storyline or whatnot, I mean, okay, fine, no problem. But that hardly ever happens, honestly. Um, Let's see, am I editing on emotions? No, and I never have, never have. There's no time. There's no time, never have. Typically, when we film a scene, I already know how I'm going to edit it. From the beginning, I press record on my camera. When I'm at the scene, I already know how I'm going to edit the scene. There's no emotions here, honey. This is a business. I'm an Aquarius. When I clock out from this, baby, I go sit down. I go play my PlayStation or I go lay down. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. <laughs> I ain't got time. Okay, so now let's address some more deep shit. Um, there's a lot of drama off camera causing audience confusion. Okay. Um <laughs> how you wanna do that? Here you go. So in their contracts, we do ask them to not share anything. Um, with their cast members if you're not filming with them. On top of that, sharing anything outside of the show, such as going live. And a few people have done that. And I feel like that is disrespect because you see I'm trying to do a show here. You see I'm trying to complete it. You see I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. But when you go live or when you start telling other cast members this is what happens, then I'm getting a different narrative. 
then things are getting switched up. Then it leads to audience confusion. Then it leads to, well, production, what, what did you do here? What did you cut out? I didn't do anything. You got to start from the top. So here's an example. Um, the individual that got on live and said, or got in the comments, because there was comments that was made on the Chase and Reality social media saying that um, um, we knew about the recording or the phone call conversation that they had with Oliver at the horseback. We had no knowledge. We had no knowledge. I found out about this recording in November. The situation happened in July. The situation happened in July. I didn't know y'all had a phone call two weeks before we filmed the horseback scene. But when we did our green screens in November, and this is what I have, of course I'm gonna put it in there because you didn't tell me you had a conversation with this person. Off camera, off camera, off camera, audience confusion. Because now you're saying that, oh, I'm doing this for a show. He wanted he wanted this for the show. No, I don't. I didn't know y'all had a conversation. I didn't know y'all had a conversation. Because last time I checked, you wanted me to help you have that conversation. And that's what it was, the horseback scene. <laughs> All right. Um what's that? Oh, go ahead. Uh, just for the sake of the show, and this is going to work for any show. If there are multiple scenes throughout the season of a particular topic discussed or a particular person wanting to have a conversation with someone, at some point in the season, that conversation has to be had for the season and all those scenes leading up to it to make sense. If it happens off camera, That doesn't work because then if we just be like the next thing they see them together is oh we good now no that's not enough <laughs> we need to see what that conversation looked like what you know what the parameters were what how that went otherwise what were all the rest of the scenes that we filmed for so let's dig deep into this a little bit further so y'all remember the AHF scene where Tonka and Oliver perform at AHF um, at Tonka's job at the time. Jaytuan wanted to have a conversation with Oliver. I asked Oliver, hey, Jaytuan want to have a conversation with you? He said, no, can't worry about it. Can't worry about it. Went to Jaytuan, told Jaytuan, he don't want to talk to you. So we worked around it. You had a conversation with Kendra. That's what y'all see on the episode. That's what y'all see. Maybe what was it the same day or next day or whatever? I had a conversation with Jay Twan. He wanted to still have a conversation with Oliver eventually. Okay. So my next suggestion was why don't we do a season three reunion, episode eight? Okay. Um, ask Oliver then. He want to speak to you at the season three. We're going to do a season three reunion. Do you mind coming to the park so you can have this conversation? No. Can't worry about it. My number one rule, I do not put people in uncomfortable situations. If you want to leave, go ahead. I can ask, I can beg, I can plead. But if you say I'm leaving, I cannot force you to stay here. Oliver didn't show up for the season three reunion. So the next time we see y'all on the show was the horseback. But again, we didn't know y'all had this conversation on the phone, sir, until November when Oliver told us y'all had this conversation. So again, the drama that happens off camera or when things happen off camera, we have to work around that stuff. That's also causing audience confusion. When the lives happen, when people say things that are happening in future episodes that have not been aired yet, 
that's disrespect to the production. Because why do we sit here and we filmed all of this stuff and y'all want to go ahead and leak it as in like, y'all don't care? Because that's clearly what it, it sounds like. <sighs> all right. Anything else on the drama off camera? Anything else you want to say about that? Um, In terms of how these, these shows work, because a lot of people, like I said, were saying, well, why didn't we see the X on the show? Why didn't we see Y on the show? If they don't bring it to the camera, they can't force it. Can't force it. We don't know what's going on outside of what they tell us directly or what they submit to the scene. If other stuff happens outside of that, the reason why we don't see it on the show, ask them. Ask them. We don't tell them not to show anything. We we say submit the scene. We come shoot the scene if we're able to do so. And then we edit it into the episode. What happens when we're not there? Can't worry about it. Can't worry about it. Um... Why wasn't there a cash trip? I mean, if you if you tune in an hour ago, I mean, Oliver kind of told you what it was. So I'm just going to say this in a professional way, because honestly, this is what it is. So this season, and I'm going to be honest with everybody, this season, the budget was very limited. Again, last year was a lot. I'm going through a lot financially, personally, a breakup, all this other stuff. It's a lot. So I usually give people two months in advance time to prep for things such as a cash trip, such as a reunion, all this other stuff. That way it doesn't feel like, okay, well, how am I supposed to get all my stuff together in two weeks? No, I'm giving y'all time. I'm giving y'all time. So in July, we decided... In July, we decided that we're going to do a cash trip. I gave the dates, I gave the locations, and this is what it was going to be. We ended up choosing Panama City Beach, which was just a few weeks after Kane's adult party. Um, I've informed everybody then that you have to pay to be a part of the cash trip. It wasn't, in my opinion, didn't seem like a lot. Um, I'm not going to say the figure, but if I did say the figure, it might be a lot of mixed opinions. So I'm gonna just leave it alone. Um, I've informed everybody that this season you would have to pay your you would have to pay a portion to be a part of the cash trip. And mind you, honestly, the total cost of the cash trip was not if everybody paid for it, it would not equal up to the half that I um of the whole total. Um July 29th, everyone received the email to pay for the cash trip. Um, the due date was September 2nd. July 29th, September 2nd. Um, Kane's party happened on August 17th. This is when it was a whole huge debacle that y'all have all seen on the show, which led us to a lot of confusion and, you know, trying to figure out where's the cast at and stuff like that. Like, what is going on here? We're still sending out emails and reminders, letting everybody know this is, um, we, th this is the due date for the cash trip. At this point, I have not received any payments for the cash trip. Now, a few people, I understand their circumstances and I have talked to them. Some of them I'm like, well, okay, you know, you, you really contribute a lot to the season. So I would love for you to still come. I'll just work through it. Um, a few other people, I just felt like if there was no communication with me about your situation, I'm assuming that you still want to go. So you're going to pay. Um, the first week of September was Sept um, September 2nd. Um, I ended up getting sick with COVID. Um, I don't think that was an excuse or anything to people not communicating with me about the trip. Um, however, I extended the deadline to the week after that, which was September 9th. I asked everybody September 9th. I'm not getting the responses. And that's the problem here. I'm not getting a response. Now, a few, like I said, a few people have reached out to me about their circumstances. But everybody else, which is majority, is not telling me anything. So I don't know what to do here. Now, 
Somebody went live and they said that, oh, well, production should have just let us go. Why? That wasn't the plan. That wasn't the plan. That wasn't the plan. The plan was for y'all to pay. I wouldn't have bought this damn two house um, Panama City Beach townhome for everybody to live comfortably in for the weekend if y'all didn't want to go. But the reason why me, Jamar, and three other people went was because I couldn't get a refund. Airbnb. I couldn't get a refund. I've asked the man. He said no. I ain't want to dispute it with my bank and then have to deal with 30, 60, 90 days of BS with them. So we just had to go. But I wasn't going to sit here and say, well, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just all go. I wasn't going to do that. Because why? I told you I'm working with a limited budget here. So now I'm out of money for going to a cash trip with only five people in a 16 bedroom home. That home is tea, by the way. And that home was tea. Hey. So again, I feel like the problem here was just it needed to be communicated. I sent out emails, I call people, I text communicate with me. I'm the easiest person to work with. I'm very soft. <laughs> very. But I think what happened, what happened, <laughs> but I think, but I think what happened here was the problem that there was no communication. There was no communication. If you just didn't want to go, just say you didn't want to go. If you didn't want to pay, just say you didn't want to pay. But now that I have spent all of this and then I can't get a refund, then we also had this party and now we're trying to figure out what else can we do for the season. The next thing was, if we're not having a cash trip, we're going to end it, which is why the season ended the way it did. Oh my God. Bitch. never seen joy my cash app is dollar sign n-o-v-a-h well, how much you want it a a four my mortgage is due on the first of february girl you can have it <laughs> my light go. deal georgia power emailing me right now <laughs> The city of Atlanta water bill. <laughs> is, is, that five, is, is that 500 USD? It says USD. I see the dollar sign in front of it. Bella, you can't get a new crib. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Thank you so much, Joy. We see you, beloved. I feel moved to share concisely and precisely the storm moves the flowers grow pick what you need and help that glow thank you for all that you are love light unbothered beautiful amazing high vibrational non-judgmental non-judgmental essential and so so necessary love love much love and return on kindness and eternal love thank you so much joy wow 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 it's wow 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 i might cry tonight Again, I'm girl. She's I ain't never seen no tip like that, bitch. That ain't no tip, bitch. You, I feel like that ain't no tip. Bitch, you that, that was a, that a, that was a girl. Goods. I need to exchange that, some goods or something. Hold on, let me put let me adjust my breastplate, baby. Could, let me go get some. <laughs> shit. <laughs> do I need to do we need to turn this camera off until after dark? Cause, baby, because I can tell Miss Google to turn the lights off. Okay, turn on. We, 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 can get it, we can get a real life special in here real quick. Okay. Wow. Girl. I didn't well, pay today, but I can pay the today. So much. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Dario looks like Jonathan Majors, but more handsome. Girl, don't don't do that. Oh wow. I don't I don't want to be tied to that man in his case. Oh. Woo! We let the um, over there. Okay, so um, so yes, that's why there wasn't a cash trip. Um, but again, professionally, I have said that after weeks of discussions, we did not have a cash trip. Um, again, like I said, 
I've asked about it on, I asked everybody in July 17th. Now I will say this for the record, um, two people were not going by default because of the dates and also because of the situation that happened in August, but that's it. But like I said, I'm not slandering anybody. I'm not trying to defame anybody. I'm not trying to be rude. This is why I'm not saying any names. However, I'm tired of people speaking on a situation instead of actually talking to me. So we don't have to do this in front of 1182. All right. So um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, Tardiness. What's that? Tardiness. Tardiness. All right. So I'm always on time to scenes. <laughs> I mean, there was on. I'm always on time to scenes. There was one scene that I was late to, and that was because the day before I was in Dallas doing the reunion for Chasing Dallas and I had to catch a red eye. And as soon as I got home, I said, bitch, I'm tired. And I overslept. Me and Jamar had to rush to the scene. This was actually Seven's drag brunch. When we arrived there, the brunch was still happening. Brandon was also there. Shout out to Brandon from um, Set It Off, Pop Up Productions. He was there filming um, Seven's um, performance and it was still used. I don't know uh, any other scene I was late to. Um, I don't know any other scene I was late to. I don't know any other scene I was late to. Do you know any other scene? Because I, I, I don't know any other scene I was late to. We have to we usually have to get to these scenes early for B roll purposes. So we have to film a lot before the cast even gets there so they can get like the walk ups, the entrances, B roll or just whatever, you know. Why would the producer be late? Why? Um let's also talk about um, call sheets. Um, let's talk about call sheets and why some people feel like, you know, um, they are, um, I guess, you know, missing in action for certain scenes and stuff like that. Well, this is what it is. Again, communication is very important for any job, including this production. Most of my communication is through email which is why I've asked everybody in their welcome email, make sure you check your emails regularly for call sheets, for discussions, updates, X, Y, and Zs, you know? Um, if you don't respond to my call sheets, I'm assuming you don't want to come. You don't want to come. If you don't respond to the call sheet, then you don't want to be there. And again, what did I just say? I'm not going to force you to be somewhere you don't want to be at. I'm not going to put you in an uncomfortable situation. So I'm assuming this is what it is because I'm not getting the communication here. So if you happen to not answer the call sheet, then unfortunately I have to take you off of it because you're not going to be there and replace it with somebody else. Example, the bowling scene. Example, the horseback. I'm the easiest person to talk to. I work with everybody's situations, but why am I getting blamed or talked about because of decisions I've made because I'm not getting the responses I need? <laughs> this is my life. Next for a reason though. Okay. Um, um, I think that is it for my last, last thing. Um, I think that's it for my last thing. 
Um, so take now, people, huh? I guess you could take questions from the people. Let's, let's see, listen. let's see, let's see, let's see. It's okay, Dario. You're a great producer. You give great production. Period. I stand on that. Thank you. Um, that's how you know people don't stand on business. You should have tell grown ass business people to check that. You shouldn't have to tell grown ass people to check their business email. <sighs> Now they saying I'm Dario giving Miss Squad and showing up three hours late. But why would I? But why would I though? Why would? Why am I showing up three hours late to a, a scene? If the scene is at eight o'clock, I'm going to be there eight o'clock. If I if if anything, I'm probably eight o five, eight ten. But let's also talk about people that be eight forty five, nine nine thirty. Eleven. Eleven. But I'm being blamed. I blame me. me. Get mine, <laughs> out mine, go hard, looking for like me. Um, NBA, uh, my, my cash up is Dario, A N D A R I O. But you know what? I honestly don't. Want look, my cash have been on screen all night. <laughs> yeah, just, just send it to Nova 84. Thank you. Um, um, all right, so the last thing that everybody wants to know, um, why is there no reunion? Hold on one second. Did you really cut out the important parts of the scene with Berlin talking about the airport situation outside to make them look bad? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Um, Seven's Drag Brunch, um, let's actually talk, let's actually stem that entire conversation. Seven's Drag Brunch, we started it off, we opened it up with how you're, how was it performing, all this other stuff, you did really good, X, Y, and Z, great job, great job. Um, there was conversations, then we got to the conversation, because Tonka brought it up, what's going on with you and Wayne? Bur I mean, Berlin and J. Tom, what's going on with, with y'all and Wayne? They talked about it. What you saw is what they talked about. They talked about Wayne. They didn't talk about anything else. They talked about how Wayne left them at the airport. This is what you also told me in green screens. So what did I exactly take out? What did I take out? I'm trying to dissect the situation that y'all gave me. There was nothing took out that was unimportant. Everything was left in. The only thing I took out of that conversation was when they talked about Darius. And I brought it back last week on the um, at Kane's adult toy party because it was brought up then. So I was just like, okay, well, let me go ahead and air it. The reason why I didn't air it originally because Darius is not on cast. Love Darius down, but he is not on cast. Why are we talking about a non-cast member and what was said on a podcast or whatever? I mean, <laughs> this goes, goes back to when we, this goes back to this goes back to when we filmed these scenes for thirty minutes to an hour. I'm not going to put in all 30 minutes to an hour. I'm not going to do that. There's other things that is happening in these scenes. And, I'm, and I don't want people to get bored or say next or let's move on. All these other things. Honey. <laughs> Why didn't you cut out Jay Swan tapping on Berlin's leg in the studio? Did you leave that in to make them look bad? No, I didn't left that in to make them look bad. I thought it was comedy. They told me that that I was informed and I knew that that was going to happen. I didn't know anything. Simple as that. Um, will we ever see Chasing Franchise, uh, Chasing Franchise incorporate lesbians into the mix? Absolutely. This is an LGBTQ-based platform. Um, we haven't casted any lesbians yet except for, ooh. Willa and Seth. <laughs> there you go. 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 Um, 
Let's see. What else do we have? What else do we have? Do what else do we have? Stop asking me about. No, I'm not. I'm not going to bring that up, and I'm not going to respond to that. Um, Hold on. Let me see. Oh, girl. I'm not responding to that. I'm just not. Girl. <laughs> Y'all are wild and crazy in this guy. Wild. 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 Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the reunion. Let's go ahead and get into the reunion. The reason why, so if you, anybody remembers back um, the third week of December, I made a live on my Instagram and I basically made that live as a warning to everybody to please just stop talking. Because honestly, I'm trying to finish the show while also dealing with all the other stress and BS around me. Um, I don't really think anybody really got it. And I probably wasn't direct about it. But at the same time, if we reading our contracts and we're understanding why we're on the show and we got to follow the show and, you know, make sure everybody sees this in this order without people, you know, adding on and saying this on lives and saying this on the after shows, it really causes, again, disrespect to production. Because why did we sit here and film all of this stuff for y'all to ruin it? I felt disrespected. I felt disrespected. When we got to Christmas week, there was a lot of hearsay. There was a lot of things I've heard from a few people that said that I was using them. There was a lot of people saying, there was also um, talks about the editing. There was also talks about just myself in general, calling me the devil, shame on me. Um, I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. Um, I didn't know who to believe. I didn't know what to, who to trust. To where I started personally blocking people because I just felt like, why are y'all doing this? Why are y'all doing this? Again, communication. If you have a problem, call me, text me, email me. A few people have done that this season, but why are the people that haven't going on live and talking to people that are not part of the team? They are here to watch a show that they're also supposed to watch you put your business out there, promote yourself. So when it's all said and done, girl, I'm riding with you outside of the show. On top of that, still having to pay for or pay back, excuse me, this cash trip, still paying it today. Still paying it today. Which leads me to, if I'm gonna have a big reunion for my final season, it's not gonna happen. What else do we have on my notes? Um, yeah, and also on top of that, a few people said they just didn't wanna come. So it was like, what? why take the risk? Or you just want to come to fight? Why take the risk? This is supposed to be celebrating the show, celebrating the success. I wanted to invite people. And I'm and by the way, for all the 1190 listening, I'm still working on something to have. It's not going to be next week. It's not going to be something right away. But I am still working on something. But my thing is this. My traditional plan of a reunion failed because people kept revealing what is next in these episodes. People are getting on these after shows and they're saying stuff that hasn't been aired yet. Then y'all have this whole disrespectful rant through Christmas where you're supposed to be celebrating Christmas with your family, but yet you're talking about me. Why? Why? And it puts me in a place where I just feel like, what am I doing this for? With all the things I have going on, what am I doing this for? Why am, I, why am I spending hours and hours in time doing green screens, filming these scenes, picking up Jamar? Hey, girl, we got a scene tomorrow at 4 a.m. I mean, 4 p.m. I'm going to go film this scene. At, right. I got, a, I got this scene at 4 a.m., bitch. <laughs> I, got, I got this scene at 7 a.m. What's disrespectful is that y'all allow what other people are saying to get to y'all. And now y'all turn it on me. 
And I, all I'm doing is exactly what I told y'all that we do here. You put on the show. We have the cameras. We have the audios. I'm a great editor. You put on the show. But the disrespect has to effing stop. And I get that every season. But this season makes no damn sense. Makes no sense. No sense. And it probably contributes to why the episode's coming out late because it's like you edit something and then it's a problem. You did it. You did it. So yes, there's no, there's no reunion because um, the constant disrespect from the cast members, cast members revealing the show. I've asked I also, let's also add, try to call the cast member that wanted to reveal every goddamn thing that was out. And I still, as of December 15th, haven't had a conversation with that person. So I can't worry about it. 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 I've also heard that the season was rushed. This season also had the same duration as season five. Can't worry about it. Can't worry about it. Cannot worry about it. We unofficially started filming this season in January, but we also, um, we officially started filming the season April um, 3rd. And I sent an email. I said, I would like for this season to just be from April to August. Let's not forget there was scenes filmed unofficially in January, February, and March. I wanted to end the show in August with a cash trip. I just wanted this to be a summer season. I asked everybody, and I've said this, let's all just be fun. Let's be colorful. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's also talk about how most of the cast is not promoting the show. So who am I doing this for? Who am I doing this for? So when y'all saw that live, again, that live was a warning. That live, because I never go live. Out of all the EPs and producers and, and people that was of authority on Chasing Reality, the CEO, Dario, Dario, doesn't go live about the show. How did y'all think I feel after I did that damn live? Damn, why did I do this live? I never do a live like this. But I had it, I had to do that. Because nobody was listening. Nobody was communicating. So again, what are we doing this for? I'm not even gonna respond to that. I did, you know, we over the Christmas break, you know, there, uh, there was a lot going on and I wanted to, you know, of course, I still want to have the reunion for you know, obvious reasons, but I, at the same time, it, I couldn't, you know, ignore what was happening uh, and I couldn't tell, you know, this man who has to put the money, effort, time, memory, storage, finances and just everything into it to be like, you should still do it, even though they're, you know, doing X, Y, and Z. It's like, there wasn't much for me to stand on, unfortunately. So, I tried. I did try. Yes. Um, but again, this is not to this is honestly not to bash anyone. I mean, it is what it is. It happened. I can't worry about it. This is why the final episode is called Can't Worry About It, because again, this entire season, it is what it is. We couldn't worry about it. I mean, it's this is honestly what we could have. This is all we worked with. I get it. Everybody was going through their issues. Everybody had to work around this show with their situations. We all have lives outside of this. I totally understand it. But you have to understand, if you wake up every morning and you open your Instagram app, 
You can also call and respond to emails that Andario sends out. Because, baby, Instagram is not the first app I open when I open my phone in the morning. Baby, I'm responding to texts, missed calls, all of that. More important than just scrolling and just... Yeah. Um, so it's unfortunate. I do take blame in some of this because, I mean, this was the cast that I've selected for my season. But at the same time, I felt like I just really didn't get the respect. I'm not asking for nothing. I'm just literally asking for responses, communications, and all these things. But then now that the show is coming out and people are seeing how this cast member is doing things, that cast member is doing things, how this is edited, how is this portrayed, all this stuff. This is real. I'm not making nobody look bad. This is what you gave me. If you said the sky is green and the audience is upset because you said the sky is green, don't blame production because you said the sky is green. That's that on that. And I ne and that's the thing. I never talk about this. Never. But I feel like it's time. To, I had to say something about it. I had to. Because this season was my final season. And I really wanted it to be everything. Reunion, cast trip, all of that. And the people that I put on this season, not everyone. Let's be clear. But the few individuals that instead of calling me, communicating, or just doing your job this season, you you didn't want to be a part of it. So why did you do it? That's what upsets me. That's what bothers me. I think I covered everything. I think I covered everything. I, I think you I think you did cover everything as best as you could. All things considered. I'm, um, I'm I ready to get out of this turtleneck because I'm hot. <laughs> baby, I'm ready to get breastplate. Girl. <laughs> That's right. Baby, I know that chest high. I know that chest is baby, high. Ain't no circulation going on here since like four or five o'clock. Yeah. Oh. But it's all right. It's all right. I do this for y'all. Yeah. If uh, I don't know if you want to open up the the chat for anything, the la any last comments? Yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So Abby said you need to go ahead and take them titties off. Um, no, why for demonetized? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> we would be demonetized if I did that on camera. That I mean, happen. well, these last three episodes ain't get shit. So, <laughs> girl, I'm, now see, you don't want to play with these. These are hard nipple. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we ain't even play like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Taylor, uh, Taylor said, "Why Orlando? Um, why Orlando? To be honest, um, it was time for another city, and so the executive, the executive producer that will be taking over Orlando. Um, I know him very well. He has helped me out with chasing Atlanta a few times. Um, he also helped out with the reunions and." you know, certain scenes that we've had early on in this um, earlier season of Chasing Atlanta. So I trust him to be able to take on the fourth city of the platform, which is Chasing Orlando. Um, I know a lot of rumors is out there about Chasing um, DC and New York. Um, I will say this, I am trying to still work on those. So that's y'all exclusive. Um, but Orlando, I just feel like that is something easy I can work on and it's next door. I mean, if I have to go down there and film it myself, I definitely would. I just need that person to be there instead of the head being there. Yeah. It's Dion. Do I have to move to Orlando or is Chicago on the far horizon? I plead the fifth. Um, Andrea, <laughs> Incredible job with this platform and should be incredibly proud of yourself. Thank you so much, Lyric. How you doing? You should come over shout here. Out to, shout out to Lyric. Shout out to Lyric London, period. Lyric was on Chasing Atlanta seasons one and two. Mm hmm. What are people talking about? How do we donate? Uh, How do we donate? You can. Not um, 
Hold on one second. <laughs> hold on, hold on one second, one second, one second, one second. You can either you can either donate um with our separate cash apps, or if you want to donate to the platform itself, I have dropped the square link. You can just simply do it that way, and then I will just half it up between myself and Jamar. Well, Malik Knox, Malik Knox did hit my cash app. Thank you so much. You just paid my Period. Money. Girl, let me let me add my real real. Okay, listen, I don't ever go on no no live without this. Do I do I need to play the music so you start getting your tip? <laughs> no, that would be real urban and ghetto. I will I will keep I will hold on to the fantasy until this camera turn off. Oh, you know what we should talk about? Well, let me let me text it to you first. No, <laughs> because no. Are we still signed? Are we still signed on that? Are we? You know what? I need to check the intellectual property of that. I feel like that might expire soon. But because that is still in the vault, okay, that we would see, it might still be a thing, and I don't want to. But just know, y'all just know, the content this year was completely different than what it should have been when we planned it in January. Completely different. Those that know, know. <laughs> Those that know, know. This would have been so me just know that chasing reality was finna go next level after, after a whole two-year discussion i don't even want to talk about it because it's gonna make you bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm gonna I'm I'm just say this i'm gonna just say this this was something that was two years in the works that would have changed the entire game of how this business ran but unfortunately woo! Ooh, shout out to Shane High Jared. Bless you. Y'all, you look. Do I need to pull out one of my, uh, do I need to open a Patreon and show this plate? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's, what's going on? Girl, I mean, what's you, going on? You best tag that goddamn cash app because the people be generous and want to, you know, donate and things. Girl, what's, what's going on? Praise the Lord, Saints. I appreciate y'all because, baby, it, it take a lot to look this cheap, honey. Period. <laughs> but no, y'all, we, we really was, you know, planning a great and like amazing production for you guys. And, you know, due to just unforeseen circumstances, and I feel like it, it really was a blessing because there was somebody that was a part of the executive group who was not the most ethical person. And child, even they did come from me, so that was my bad. <laughs> we, we had all, you know, trust in that person. However, that person switched up on the kids real quick, like, and we didn't get to do what we wanted to do. But you know what? I feel like it's a blessing in disguise, you know, and it's all about divine timing. So as we continue to grow and build the platform, I feel like that opportunity will present itself again even greater than the, you know, the means that we were doing it the first time. And let it be that. And that's all. And that's all. For those that know, no. For those that know, no. And <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not giving up on it though. Oh, um, I told you that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I still, I still. That's that's why I said 2024 for me. I know chasing Atlanta is going on a hiatus, but it's really to restructure, rebuild the foundation. Um, so I'm not going to tell you my secrets, but I mean, if you know, you know. Um, yeah, um, things went left this season, but it came back right. Absolutely, absolutely, it'll definitely present itself again. It definitely will. Um, the blessing will come back around in some form. Absolutely. Um, please do chase in DC, but take your time. Absolutely. 
Um, let's see. Chasing, where are they now? That is something I do want to work on. That is something I do want to work on. Um, all right, y'all. It's 221. You got anything else you want to talk about? Um, shout out to you for bringing me a part of this amazing platform and this legacy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much, Jamar. <laughs> My thing with you, Jamar, is... My thing with you, Jamar, is... I enjoy it. I love you, bitch. <laughs> and I love you back. I love you, bitch. <laughs> That's my girl. Because we are sister. We, we stand together. We make each other stronger. That ain't never going to change. Shout out to Joy. <laughs> Bella's going to get me. Shout out to motherfucking bitch. I might need to send Joy a new or something. <clears throat> Please do. <laughs> Girl, you just said, girl, I'm not. A lot. So you get my yeah. cash app like that, girl. You... Okay, because I mean, she should have honestly just sent it to the cash app. You might, I don't know what I would have had to find, but it's girl. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, did, did Scotty do his, um, his recap? They'll do it tomorrow. Okay, I figured they was going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> um, but yes, again, thank you. Honestly, for real though, Jamar, thank you so much. You have really been a great help to this entire season. I mean, just for you being on here, um, you know, being a true a true fan of the show to now being one of my true friends and also somebody I can really trust when it comes down to doing this because it is not easy, honey. As you see, oh, it is not easy. Absolutely. Now you, see, now you see it. I now see it. I, I do. You gotta see it. I do. That's that's why I, a lot of times when it comes to this, I don't bother you. I check in. You tell me. Now, Jamar, now I, I want to say, I do want to say this before we get out. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if I don't answer that phone, do not call me again because you know what I'm doing. I'm probably editing. I'm probably <laughs> editing. Do not call me. Call. Unless you do not call be glued to this computer and I don't want to be late. Don't call my phone. Um, but yes, Andre. Andre, you should have came up here. Thanks for six se seasons, three cities, and countless spinoffs. Yes. Because, I mean, somebody got to do it. <laughs> um, okay. Let's go ahead and get off. Thank y'all again so, 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 so much. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed the season. Um, I hope I didn't spill too much tea to hurt anybody's feelings. But, I mean, it is what it is. Um, thank you again. Um, six seasons since 2017. Shout out again to Kevon Burns. Without Kevon, we would not be here today. Um, shout out to, you know, Reese G. Reese G was the first person to bring me Chase in Dallas. And we was able to expand the brand because originally we thought this was just going to be Chase in Atlanta. Shout out to all the cast members across all cities that was able to make the shows possible to entertain to these people. Yes, again. Drama is what sells to these shows. But if you showcase your business, you will see a huge benefit out of it. And that's the purpose of this platform. So again, thank you all so, so much. So, so much. I'm happy. The show is done. This is a new life for me. In two days, my birthday. Um, two, in two days, I will be 29 years old. And I'm here not here. Because it's mine now. Thank y'all so much. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. Stay tuned. Chasing Orlando will be happening soon. We are releasing the casting call information tomorrow. And yes, you will get that Chasing Dallas teaser as well. Um, it is coming soon. Um, and then anything else that we bring to the brand, we'll definitely um, you know, let y'all know on our website at mychasingreality.com. You also have our Instagram at chasing.rlty. You also have this YouTube where you can see all of our content. Look at our community wall. Look at our videos. Look at our playlists. It's just all there. So, again, thank y'all. But, baby, I'm going to go to bed. And I might wake up at, like, 4 o'clock p.m. Because I'm tired. You can see the eyes. You can see the bags on the eyes. Thank y'all so much. Jamar, you want to take it out? Hey, y'all. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is pure. You're a pal and a confidant. 
Que limpie tu pared y dale de everyone you knew. You would see the biggest gift would be for me. And the card attached would say, thank you for being a friend. And on that note, thank y'all so, so much. Bye. Man. Oh wait, this is this is really honestly the last thing I'm going to say. Y'all made my dog mad at me, and I'm pretty sure she probably pooped somewhere on the other side of my couch. You would smell it. But I think she's real mad, so I'm finna let her go out here for 30 minutes in this frigid cold and have at it. All right, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful night. Y'all have a great night. Thank y'all so so much. <laughs>